Buonasera a tutti. Good evening. That was for you. Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Fate Grip, and we are here together, um, and we're very happy to have everybody here, uh, and and welcome to session sixty-four, ramifications, um, which is definitely a it's going to be a bright and cheery session. It means we're all turning into rams. Uh, that, exactly. Yes. Um, absolutely. Uh, so. Uh, welcome everybody uh, to our amazing little group uh, and we are just going to go straight into it and and do some oh my gosh sticks and stones <laughs> thank, you. thank you thank you very very much um, what a start thank you so much for that that's really appreciative I hope you enjoy the session and um, and stick around um, so we'll make this as uh, MVCDM oh my gosh thank you very very much that's very kind um, as you can see, I'll, I, might, I might quickly start to say, um, obviously, we are missing one of our um, team this evening, and that's going to be uh, Amara, who is unfortunately not very well. So she's going to uh, she's going to watch from the sidelines and um, make sure that uh, you know, uh, hopefully, sound is good and, and be our critique. Um, she's just blasting you on the messages. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll keep an I'll keep an eye on. <laughs> I'll keep on uh, the. Uh, oh, I've already gotten. Yeah, I've already gotten the uh, the uh, some some uh, text about it, but that's okay. Um, exactly, till I appreciate a, a bit too much. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the subs already. I'm going to go straight into some shout outs. So, who would like to start with our little shout outs before we get going? Yeah, I mean, I can go. <laughs> Um, uh, so for everyone who is viewing at the moment, um, uh, we will be announcing the winner of some beautiful, uh, well, a beautiful glass, etched paladin glass from Meeples and Dragons. Thank you very much. And also the D20 Titan Antimatter. Um, so stay tuned for that. That will be announced after the break. Excellent. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you very much for showcasing that too. I, I didn't know where it was, so right I yeah, like all prepared. Um, they're sold out too, so this is yeah. Whoever's getting this, this will be the last the, one. The last one that goes. The last out. of its kind. Um, if you go, if you use TikTok, please follow us on TikTok at its fade script. Uh, if you want to know how what our setup looks like, so the cameras and the PC and the rig and where we film from in the set, it's a really good place you can jump on in and see some clips of behind the scenes kind of stuff. I who's like the, it. Who's the rig? I'm the rig. <laughs> self claim rig. Amazing. Um, yeah, that's amazing. So you you took a bit of a, a, a like a like a little image or a shot of us. Yeah, there's a few different clips. There's oh. You can see the dice that we use, the different sensors they lay out on the table, just little things like that. Cool. That's really cool. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, <laughs> uh, so with that, I think. Do you have something? Uh, I'll give a little shout out to uh, someone who's quite often in our chat. I'm not sure if they're there now, but uh, to Tabletop Troops. Uh, started streaming their own sessions. Um, yeah. Caught a little bit of it. Unfortunately, it clashed with the football game that I wanted to watch. So I, uh, I, I caught what I could, but uh, very good from what I did see. Uh, so if you guys uh, feel inclined to, um, I'm not sure exactly what their handle is, but uh, go and search for Tabletop Troops on Twitch. Excellent. I have a request. Ooh, what do we do have? Do you mind moving that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really <laughs> annoying. To, to, to I get can't to see the last button. message. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That thing. Just Down no, wherever. Put good. it on the floor. I want to put it there. <laughs> right. Oh. Hey, there we go. There, there he is. Tabletop Troops is here. Hey. Hey. Welcome to Tabletop. Tabletop Troops. Because you're here, thank you so much. Do you want to just put in what your what your handle is on on uh, Twitter or and slash Twitch um, for everybody uh, in the chat so they can check you out? Um, uh, actually, one little shout out um, that I would like to do. Uh, it's for the musician who creates our music during the break and the beginning, uh, Odin Joe Hansen. Um, you'll see his handle in the on our screen, uh, right bottom left hand corner. Um, also, we haven't put it in there, but anybody who does like metal, um, check out his band Like Thieves. You can see that on iTunes as well, easily enough, or YouTube them as well. I think they're on there. Amazing, excellent. Thank you. 
Yes, links are allowed. Links are allowed. Uh, I mean, I guess so. I didn't. I, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, so mm -hmm. go for it. Um, what are we going to do about it anyway? Well, that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Uh, uh, excellent. All right. And I think oh, the last one I um, would like to shout out will be uh, yes. Uh, absolutely. So a shout out for a lovely dice maker um, at Banshee Workshop on Twitter. You can find her dice there. And um, and she's just updated her dice shop. And she's uh, an amazing person in the community um, of dice makers as well. So please go to at Banshee Workshop to check out her, our, our local dice maker. Um, for, for this for this uh, lovely state. Speaking of which, I do want to just um, I guess make everyone aware. We had a, a huge statewide uh, 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 power outage um, today. Uh, apparently, there is a very very small chance um, that might happen again. And uh, if it does, that's why we might go offline all of a sudden. Um, it's so, okay. We have Emily out the back on a like a bicycle to just <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. correct. Yes, yeah, that's, that's why she's she yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. So, so we're um, we're working hard on that bicycle just to give us that energy. But actually, no. Um, but yeah, if we do uh, just go offline all of a sudden, that is the reason. But enough with my uh, with my terrible um, voice. Yeah, stop voice. talking. We don't want but to I will be talking anymore. more for everybody. <laughs> Where's my recap? Because we're going to go straight into it uh, with our little recap. But, but before we do... Ooh. Nice. A little bit of ambiance as we recap. If everybody is all good. This is. Let's do this. So, where we left off last week... You all rested on the mountain peaks of the Shadow Crag after attempting to bring Ragav's cell to you, the Enchanter having been captured by Malestra in Shan. You were unsuccessful, but gave a distraction enough for him to escape. After meditating, resting, foraging and tinkering, you all set off casting forbiddance to avoid demons on the way and potentially damaging them as well. Although you felt like you were being watched at all times while sneaking into a cave that pointed to a more direct route towards the Lord of Blades, a set of riddles with golden rewards greeted you and within its lair this skull and many glowing red eyes surrounding it greeted you, being pleased you would uh, rid the area of the Warforged. Although on the way out of the conversation and the pink lighted tunnels, all but Gunner saw your quests suddenly done, your goals completed, and happiness take over, the world finally at peace. And Gunner, Realizing the charming effect that was taking place now faces this skull creature solo and sent a mass of flame in its direction while your companions mumble and stare off into oblivion. So, the, that very moment that the charming effect takes place. Gunner, you look over and immediately after casting that massive flame line to back towards this skull creature, a couple of things happen at once. You see Amara suddenly get shifted out of out of this effect and looks at you and says, Ah that was crazy. Are you okay? You sound different, Amara. Um, <clears throat> uh, am I okay? <laughs> Looking I around, <laughs> you're fine. Yeah. But but around you, you see your com the, the rest of your companions just blank faced, okay. mumbling under their breaths. Yay! We're, yay! Finally, we're done. 
this story is over. Woo. <laughs> Campaign two. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and this wall of fire is still active, yes. It's active, and it's it's taking up the entirety of that tunnel in front of you back towards where this skull creature um, said his goodbyes, back where the gold in piles in this cavern uh, lay. Um, okay. Trying to wrap my head around this. Okay, so it is uh, the growth, the plant growth, catching fire. Make a perception check. Is it uh, plant growth has a name. It's called Penelope. <laughs> and she's now on fire. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> right, you cast talk with plants? Can you hear her screaming? No. <laughs> um, twelve. A twelve. The 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 color of that pink tunnel still is bright and above that the licks of flame just and the smoke that comes after it just almost covering that entire ceiling of that of, of this tunnel just obscures the vision too much you can't make out what's it affect what it's affecting in back in the cavern okay um uh, we, we he's coming back we need to leave now let me try something and she just looks towards Rook and Thorum and and uh, Dravago and she looks at you and says, which one should I slap first? Uh, Thorum. Okay. And with this backhand, a monk's backhand, whack! It goes across the face of this dragonborn. Um, give me a wisdom saving throw with advantage, please. He means death saving throw. <laughs> Done in three stooges, like <laughs> <laughs> uh, 21. A 21. And with that, uh, you suddenly no longer see Fariso in front of you. The green of a, of, of a cleaned world saved. But you see and feel this heat. And welcome, Animeda. Welcome. <laughs> You, you just see your companions in front of you and the danger immediate. And you feel this burning sensation, not from flame, but from bruise on your face. I turn around and go, ah, this is my Thank you, Amara. And I'm gonna... It worked! I should do this again! Yep. Yeah. Smack! And she slams your face and then yours, Rook. Both make wisdom saving throws with advantage, please. I feel like she should hurt her hand on Dravago. Hey, one crap and one at 20. Wow! Woo! And you are also out of this, uh, out of this weird sensation of being almost sucked in to a world that is no longer in need of the five. But now, looking around, you are back where you were. Rook. That was a 18. However, <coughs> Rook, you still see around you Malestra lying dead and Fariso <laughs> nodding and just giving her, giving you all, because looking around your companions are still there. Okay. And so far, Corvair is safe because of you. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should punch him. Yes. <clears throat> just, yeah. just close fist this time. Why don't you use your stuff? Okay. Crack. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the, the the her entire weight then jumps almost like a like a like a, a downward smack. Um, just for the purposes of this, I'll just. Oh my freaking! No. <gasps> I found. There, here. It's fine. <clears throat> close by. It's gonna make a. Oh god. It's gonna make a quick roll here. Oh wow, not twenty. <laughs> okay, um, excellent. <laughs> With the staff, yeah, cool, cool. All right, all right. Um, eight. What was her bonus day? That's ten points of bludgeoning damage, and you automatically, because you took damage, overcome that uh, charming effect. 
and you are now hurt. Your your skull is on fire. It is just that pulsating sensation is just ridiculous, um, and and it overcomes you. You almost see birds uh, in your in your vision, but you uh, you right yourself. Yeah, lay a hand on your shoulder and say, "Sorry, but we had to." As I lay the hand, I'll cast your wounds. Go for it. <laughs> Please take me back to where I was. <laughs> Eleven points. All right. <clears throat> and you all hear that the the familiar sound of of burning on the ground, and you feel that heat from Gunner's magic, and you look beyond, and you just see the smoke billowing, <clears throat> and all of a sudden, you feel a tremor. The we ground need to go starts shaking side to side. I suggest we move towards the exit. We're near an exit to the cabin, right? You see that the other end of the tunnel veers off a little bit to the right, but you don't see an opening. I suggest we run. There's only one way forward. Starting. Yeah, Yeah, I'm going to run. Run. Okay. All right. I need uh, those who are running make make athletics checks, please. As you all start to just completely leg it. Oh. What? Thirteen. Yep. <clears throat> Fifteen. Right. That's with a negative two. Jeez. Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Okay, without much trouble at all, you race um, one after the other, and you are just making a break for it. You're, the tunnel continues on quickly, and you see that, that the wall of fire um, disappears very quickly. Around that corner, you no longer feel that heat overtaking you and making you sweat, but replacing that is that, um, is that running, that complete and utter focus you turn that corner and about a hundred feet away there seems to be some sort of exit looking beyond there you see that this opening it's odd it turns from natural rock to metal a man-made structure or a man-made entrance with um, plates of steel, of bronze and, and, sta- and it's just normal steel, make up this entranceway where there's a, an enormous door that doesn't seem, an enormous opening that doesn't seem to have a door in rectangular fashion leaning outward. Is the earth still shifting like me? The tremor starts to just, it, it, it does continue as though there's a, a small earthquake of sorts. You see above you, small rocks start to hit the ground around you. None big enough to cause any damage, but it, it is loosening and you see cracks in the ceiling. I'm going to suggest we slow down as we approach, or I'd like to slow down as I approach the metal ominous exit to the cave. Okay. I feel a kinship with the metal, so I'm just going to go straight into the metal area. <laughs> yep, going through. Do you both want to do anything else or follow as well? Yeah, I'm going to probably slow up a bit. Um, with Amara Thorin. just races towards uh, with uh, Dravago and Thorum. Yeah, as I'm slowing up, I'm going to try and take a better purchase on our surroundings uh, make a make a perception check are you where are you doing this still in the tunnel or at the end or towards the entrance i'm assuming i'd be beside thoron okay so you are near the entrance now yeah. and make a perception check for me uh that's 19 not natural oh, and sorry 20 not natural sure in total as you peer out of this weird uh <coughs> entrance way you notice that a couple of things at once, that the tunnel uh, behind you, you do now see just beyond where your companions are running from, larger rocks are now starting to fall and the cracks in the ceiling are getting wider and the ground seems to be getting some crevices in there as well. 
as though this entire portion is shifting away from itself and beyond you notice that there is a flat metallic bridge beyond the entrance which seems to be <laughs> which seems to be <laughs> um, divided by ch large chains and they seem to be connecting other large bridges and below there's nothing but lava and then beyond that some sort of overlook rocky overlook it's as though this immediate area in front of you is an enormous pool of of lava mm. and then beyond is more rock and mountain which just is separated by this metallic bridge mm. so this cavern splitting and there's a couple of bridges that are what are they sh shifting or breaking apart or something they're beyond the entrance they're outside yeah and they seem to just be moving slowly back and forth still keeping and and not breaking apart no okay and do it is i see dravago safely heading in for yep forward? yep uh which case i will tap thorn on the shoulder and I go we should continue down this tunnel Head towards the bridges. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So you continue your way out, completely exiting this mountainside. And as you all come out one by one next to each other, everyone needs to make me a dexterity saving throw, please. <laughs> Including Alara, she has evasion. Yeah, correct. <clears throat> no, she just takes off damage. Saving throw? Saving throw. As, don't tell me those numbers yet, but as you <clears throat> come out of this entrance, these tremors outside start to get more violent and the rock directly beneath you starts to crack even more this very small landing before the bridge starts and as it moves further and further away from itself again um this is attempting to not accidentally fall over and possibly go into lava pools which are on either side of you now what did you get five yep that's 26. Yep. Uh, using Flash of Genius is a 17. Okay. You flashed yourself. Okay, wow, good rolls tonight with your with your decks. And... Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> and you all managed to just make it over in, onto this hot metal bridge. That's... It's like a lattice where there's small gaps that, that this smoke and small bits of lava are, are bu bubbling upward. Even I made it? No. Okay. <laughs> I was like, really? With a uh, six? Amara also <laughs> jumps over safely. However, you all watch as Gunner, you attempt to make it over that bridge, but you hit the side or the, 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 one of the sides of the bridges and you start to fall. Can I use a reaction? What would you like to do? Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> One, two. Can't wait. <laughs> <over here. laughs> so as I understand, he's falling, he falls off the very edge of the platform. Yep. I'd like to, if I can, use my uh, force push to the silence tower. What? My tablet egg feed. What? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in an earlier episode, I spent quite a few hours reading the journal by Sigbert, where he wrote all the lessons that he learned. And uh, from that, I think I should have the rudimentary skills to, as a reaction, cast a force push. Which, so, it's a dex save of 14. You can choose to fail it if you'd like to. And it should push him five feet back up onto the ledge. What do you say is a dex one? Dex of 14, but you can, Dex of 14. You can choose to fail if you'd like to live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to roll just to see what happens. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> it's uh, failed. <laughs> I was falling. <laughs> yeah. And with that, Gunnar, you, as, yeah, as, as you lose your balance, suddenly, almost like someone with a hand just puts pressure on your chest, you feel yourself go back up and land safely on the ledge that leads further further away from this um, this mouth of an entrance but by now you see behind you that the tunnel has caved in that there's simply rocks boulders and enormous cracks in the earth and it is now impassable and that is where Penelope died has been left. <laughs> oh, well. oh, how do we get Penelope again? <laughs> oh. 40, 40 episodes. Dies in a... uh, we got Penelope. It's our close game. Who? Who stole from the garden? The future boss. He comes back seeking revenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's what's forward? Let's Make a perception it. check. That's a 24. 24, wow. As you look around, you notice that there are a couple of bridges that that separate small, or quite actually quite large, rocky natural <clears throat> landings. And you see that they are that they are these bridges these platforms are being held up by chains that are embedded into the rock far above you looking up you notice that these craggy peaks are now behind you it seems that you are now outside on the other side of and on on, on the demon waste side of uh of this land please I was just waving at Sass. Oh, Sass. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very, very much. I'm glad, I hope you're well. Um, and thank you very, very much for the sub. Thanks. Um, and then, beyond this large lava pool that's been separated by rock and bridge, there's sort of a, another long, almost like a ledge, a rocky ledge that goes left and right north and south forever the lava pool itself is like football fieldish in size and and it's it does stop eventually but it looks like the only way past where your point is is over one of the bridges and then you see that beyond this ledge of rock an expanse of canyons plains of earth deep red in color and with that roll you just make out below because the ledge then drops and you don't really see how far but you can just make out tiny specks of moving figures and camps and glints of metal. Oh yeah, seem to have made up quite a bit of ground going through that cave. Forged army is camped just down there on the plains. It uh, seems we must cross these bridges to get to get by this little ledged area. You also notice <clears throat> that the lava beneath you now starts at a particular point starts to stir almost twist in some sort of small whirlpool towards the middle not a natural phenomena that everything around it seems to be naturally just moving bubbling but this point seems to be spinning as though a funnel, as though a, 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 a plug has been let out. And this, and this whirlpool gets larger and larger. Can we all 
people see this room globally. Yes, you absolutely do. Is there a large sized rock nearby? A large sized rock? Um, you can make me a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you do see a couple that look like they are fairly loose because of these tremors that are start that are c continuing but but lessened. I throw one in the whirlpool. Okay, how are you doing that? Yeah, pick it up with both hands. And oh. Okay. Well, I say large size, I'm like. Right, right. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm thinking that like a, like large in terms of creature creature size. Got it. Um, uh, if I see him going to pick up a large rock, I'll assist. Well, okay. An idea of large, I guess. Um, <laughs> That's very bolder of you. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> I'm going. Um, so you're assisting. Make me a strength check with advantage as you see Dravago come over and attempt to lift it with you. That's not a gun. Do you think that's going to work? Um. Um, tell, you, tell you what. <laughs> we, I could, I could sense us both struggling, so I'll hit another flash of genius so you can add five to that. You That's flash him again. That's a ten with advantage. Uh, Which a five and wait, a wait, plus the five. Yep. So two plus three. Hey, advantage. Yep. Or oh, is that a one? Yep, the other one's a one. <laughs> so two plus three plus okay. five. That's ten. Um, Rook oh. and Gunner, you see that Dravago to help seems to be almost behind, completely behind Thorum, putting his arms almost around the shoulders of the Dragonborn, <laughs> attempting to lift it. While, <laughs> well, because of the, the smallness of that landing, they seem to just be just, just almost like um, a, a Roomba uh, around, uh, like, like a dancing train. Um, and, and they're just not doing much to this boulder. If they can see my face, I'm... <laughs> clearly disappointed <laughs> and I go back to focusing on the pain on my head after I got smacked in the head by Amara. Cool. Yep, yeah, cool. And look out where yeah, the uh, maybe. <laughs> Wolf Forge may be. Um, Perception check. <clears throat> just as to, uh, so I can see Rook looking disappointed so I'm going to uh, hit that boulder with some enlarge reduce <laughs> and reduce it <laughs> as we're putting all that strength into it <laughs> and see, see what happens. Okay. Well, that will allow that roll to succeed. As, as you are just trying to put as much stretch of those fingers over this, over this rock, it suddenly you feel your hands just go inward, and this rock is getting smaller and smaller. I'm gonna look over my shoulder and say, "Thank you." I don't know. We should, we should make this look good. So, I'm going to motion you so we get this smaller rock, hopefully while they're not paying attention, and yeet it as high as we can. Uh huh. And as uh, as we let go, I'll cancel the spell so that the boulder comes okay. up again. Okay, and okay. Where, where are you aiming at? Just into the lava. Into the, into the yeah. lava swell. Okay, into the lava swell. And then yeah. I'll <coughs> to try and get them to turn back around. Um... <laughs> I'm getting nervous. I'm getting too many that don't happen often. Um, 20. 20? I'll get yeah. to you in a second. You all see that this rock rises and <laughs> becomes enormous in size again. And just as it becomes that rook and gunner, you notice that there's this large rock that these two have carried and have thrown into the air with their pure, raw muscle. And they... You see it land perfectly in the lava and where this whirlpool is is um, emanating from, and it and and rises and lowers for a couple of seconds, and then disappears. I turn to Dravago and say, "That's good. That means there's probably not a lava monster in there." <laughs> I assume that's what you were worried about too. <laughs> I was more worried about. Rook seeing me as weak. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that perception check, Rook, you see what Dravago saw yeah. beyond that, that um, I guess, the edge of this uh, large lava pool. You notice that it goes straight down and then beyond are camps and earth and canyon and a never ending horizon of red. Um. 
I would like to. I don't. Know, I don't know if this is going to work. Cast locate object. Yep. And <laughs> I'm thinking of something that would be on Agnarak. Okay. Um, likely. Uh, are you focusing on what? What in particular are you trying to focus on? What? Ah, uh, probably. Maybe the insignia of the um, Chimera that okay. may have been on him. Yes, yes. With that immediately, and and this is uh, for how how much I distance? I think it's a thousand feet. Yep. A thousand, a thousand, a little bit, well, I'll get it up. And does that mean you just know where? Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Um, does that um, tell you exactly where he is? You can't actually see him. You just can locate where he is at the moment. Is that correct? So it's a thousand feet. Uh, if the object is in motion, you know the direction of its movement. The spell can locate a specific object known to you as yep. long as you have seen it up close. Yeah, cool. Which you have. The spell can locate the nearest object of a particular kind. Cool. Uh, yes, this is probably what answers your question. This spell can't locate an object if anything. Oh, so, yeah, I think where he is, what pinpoint. Okay. You pinpoint exactly his location. Mm. And it is on the very far reaches of your spell as you close your eyes and cast your mind forward. And he is forward. Yeah. He is <clears throat> almost dead ahead, down. And you, f and you see in the very far distance this almost flash of a star or white light pulsing. <clears throat> and one of these very, very tiny figures that are mo that's moving around, shifting like little ants, is highlighting as Agnarak is, is now located. Knowing the distance that I can do it, how far between us and him? Probably, uh, probably just on that thousand feet mark so still away. Far. Yeah. Um, I'll stop channeling that. Oh, it stays on, but I'll sure stop that turn um completely missed <laughs> what happened over there sorry <laughs> uh, <laughs> after casting locate object did so, Walpole is totally safe there's no lava monsters in there yeah we well, yeeted it with a giant boulder did you see no I was trying to find the Lord of Blaze it's <laughs> massive this boulder uh, yes I, I think well, let's see what you accomplished and I walk over has the whirlpool stopped Looking down, <laughs> the whirlpool is continuing. Has yes, not you accomplished much yet. We accomplished nothing. Where? <laughs> Gunner? Does this look familiar? flaps that swings and a tidal wave happens on the other side of the earth. That this, is very... This has achieved something. You will see. Make an arcana check, Gunner, to see if you... <laughs> oh, I need good job. <laughs> scenery. Does this look familiar to that time where I was um, looking at the... Key, the no, no this, this looks like unfamiliar territory here. Can I see the la lava lake? Yes, you sure can. It's, it's directly in front of you. Oh, the, you mean, mm. sorry, you mean where this, where you saw Tiamat mm. rise? Mm. Um, no, you cannot. Not from this distance, unless, make it, actually make a perception check just in case. Go for it. Um, 17 17 <clears throat> it's hard to tell you think it's in front of you but the, the, the earth and the movement far far beyond this crevice is just the, the, the heat is rising in and again that sensation that you normally see in the distance where heat starts to move and make the air shimmer is, is blocking your focus as to where this could be. And then you see more whirlpools start to churn and turn in the lava. And you then suddenly see from the depths of fire, winged beasts start to emerge <clears throat> large red or blues and purples and greens just <laughs> emerge and splash lava out of five six seven of these whirlpools that are starting to 
um, take form as though the lava itself seems to part in these locations, allowing these demonic beings to just fly out with a screech. And, and with that, you see small gibbering creatures just just fly up into the air and out of sight, back, either back towards the Warforge camps or out of sight around um, peaks, mountain peaks, or from small to large to massive, um, different sized demons are just flying up in the tent. You see about 20, 30 of them, um, one after the, another, just rise up, ignoring you completely, it seems. Three of them look hurt. Looking at them, it doesn't seem to be. It doesn't seem to be like they have any sort of burns, burn marks, what you'd normally see uh, humanoid skin uh, be affected by. It doesn't, doesn't seem to be on them, no. Right, so in that case, I think we've traveled beyond the radius of my protector spell. Anything should be able to drop in on us magically at this point. How far away are these things from us? They are... It's a few feet. 15, 20, 25, 30 feet away. All of those together. Because some of these pools are closer than others. Um, there are some that are 60, 70 feet away as well. And by the time you count to 10, about 100 of them have emerged and are just flying. There, there's one type of creature that seems to be that seem to fly up and has now formed a rotating wing uh, ring that's just flying one after the other in the air. I'm gonna yell out to I'm gonna quietly call out to Amara. <laughs> I'm gonna yell out to Amara quietly. As the nice <laughs> very quietly I'm gonna say Amara can you hide us? Is there a boulder I can hide behind nearby? As you look behind you to look at Amara, you see her once again staring. She seems to be not responding to you, but she seems to be seated in her meditative state, but she doesn't seem to be responding to that question. A boulder? Yeah. Looking around. There are a couple of boulders that are behind you, just beyond either side of that massive doorway, that you could find some, some hiding space. Make a stealth make a <laughs> um, stealth check. Has the uh Warforge camp like are they uh, mustering up with this? Nothing or seems are they to be just different. Going about and doing their daily business. Seems to be just going about. But you can see some of these demonic creatures are flying towards them, landing, and then moving around within that crowd. Okay. That's, That's a good. six. Six. <laughs> you roll with disadvantage because of your heavy armor. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Is he within five feet of me? Who? Oh, um, ten feet of me. Thorum. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you get a plus five. So. But I don't know how much that helps. <clears throat> cool. That's an eleven. Eleven. <laughs> Clunk, 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 doof, doof. On that ground, the heavy footsteps of a dragonborn with heavy armor, chainmail, just crunches towards and over, and you all watch him as he, he just climb over this boulder, and your head still sticking out, and you're looking out. I gesture towards the others. Hide. <laughs> Hide. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I don't think uh, Thorm's doing a good job of it. <laughs> should perhaps follow his lead and Classic. not draw the attention of these demons until they pass. From what I can see, they are heading towards the camp and in the ranks of the Warforged, so if they've already seen us being only a few feet away, there may not be a point in hiding. Have they seen us, though? They're only a couple of feet away from us, aren't they? Flying out. They are, but they all seem to be looking either up or yeah. back towards the camps or towards the the mountain peaks, where some of them are then flying off to. Although, this time, 
from the very first whirlpool that emerged, there's a different looking demon that emerges. Firstly, swords emerge. One, two, four, seven swords. All long blades rise up from this lava unaffected by the flame and the heat. And then holding each sword on the same body, there is a snake-like figure that emerges past the surface. And then this serpent-like being continues in its body-like form into this green, large tail. Earth. A woman, a humanoid woman face greets you. And she's, this time, this being is looking around, taking stock of the surroundings. And she is only 30 or 40 feet away. And let me just see if <laughs> she notices you in your stealth. Yeah. <laughs> looking around for just a moment before her eyes lock on, you see these seven arms start to brandish these long swords and you automatically everyone but you Dravago have seen this being before a type of being like this and you recall deft bartender hands in the byways the bartender in that place was a woman of similar features just without the weapons that very quickly poured drinks with two with with one hand into another served customers was very friendly but this creature in front of you looks anything but a different one different features very angular very fierce eyed much more so than this bartender that you saw in the byways in the hall the golden hall this one looks towards you all and she says well flesh and not i see we must be introduced okay hail Resident Blue? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, can you do me a favor and make me a performance check if that's okay? Yes, okay. Just for the, just for the convincing side of things. <laughs> uh, that is an 18. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> More recruits have come to serve him, I see. His allies, and she looks up to see these demonic beings fly up with screeches and roars and gibbering sounds. His allies come. The metal beings also yeah 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 we were um we were just out on a mission for uh, the lord of plates and just returning killed killed a few people that were trying to stop him back in your life and which beings did you manage to survive uh the, the notorious five Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, deception by now. <laughs> yes. I'm putting my hood up here. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. That, that was fine. That little quip is enough to give you advantage. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be. I'll be. Thank a, you for the advantage. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really. Uh, 
that is a 20. A dirty 20. Okay. Dirty 20. I have heard of these beings. Powerful, aware of his presence, but yet you have destroyed them. No, no, we, we ran. We could not hope to meet such <laughs> mighty creatures. Oh no! Kind of kick or something. No, 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 they are they're, they're gone. gone. They're gone. They, they were tough. But we, we were tough. With the power of Razor Blue behind us, how could we lose? I ran. You what? I ran. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am, and he will be pleased to know this. Tell me. Were you on your way to tell of your victory to our metallic allies? Or were you destined to go to the Herald of Darkness so that they may relay this new victory to, the, to Lord Fraser Blue himself? Yeah, yeah, the, the Herald, um, we, we just, I, I lost my map, where, where was that again? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is fortuitous that I have seen to your welcome. I was concerned we were about to be attacked. That is why we have emerged. To find the Herald of Darkness, you may go down and into the valley of the Warforged and on the edge of that fire pit where it lives, you may speak to it there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what we'll do. And uh, we, we weren't attacking that. That boulder was just a, a celebration of our victory over the fire. We were shouting off. Well, if you choose to celebrate more in the future, do not disturb our doorways. No, 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 never, never, never again. And be wary. The Warforge still yet not know of this illusion that our Lord Fraser Blue has over them. Revealing this can undo much <clears throat> in our victory. Yes. Say nothing. Of course, why would we do that? Those damn Warforge. I've got my hood up and I'm just loitering in the back listening to this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the path leads down. Go now. And all of seven of her long swords <coughs> first all point towards you. And you can see that all of these long swords are slightly curved at the tip into a wicked spray of smaller spikes as though shearing on flesh would cause massive amounts of, of wounding. And she then turns each blade one after the other and points behind her towards the southwest or to her, to her right. Um, and you can now see that the, the, this crevice does have a bit of an angular pathway, that, like a, another track that leads downward. It will take some time, but powerful beings such as yourself would have no trouble. Of course, uh, th thank you for reminding us of the directions. Um, of course. Salutations to you. Good travels. We will watch here for anyone that would be following. She gives you a bit of a nod. You can see that her black braided hair suddenly 
is set completely alight and you can see her almost puff out in and she her entire form becomes larger and then she turns after that display of power and simply glides over the lava and moves towards the north away from your position I'll, uh, even though I don't breathe, I'll go, fuck, did that work? <laughs> um, when I'm in here, so I, I'm going to, um, yeah, put my hand on the bar, go shoulder and go, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. <laughs> should, should we? Yes. Where, go. <laughs> where should we go? The Lord of Blades is close by. Well, she basically just gave us the giant hint that we were kind of already going to do anyway and dispel this illusion mm. uh, but we, we should also note that this herald is by the lake of fire the herald is by the pit of fire it seems yes that's in not the one below us but the correct one, the one below us. no the, the one that the one that is further away within the warforged cab itself it seems and surrounding it from what was described uh, well, perhaps dispelling this illusion, we could potentially get the Warforged army to assist us. I if, think this is excellent. If this uh, herald decides to attack, but uh, now maybe you should. If you need any, um, if we meet any people along the way, then maybe this may help you in convincing them. And um, I cast Enhance Ability on Dravago and Charisma, so get advantage on Charisma. Anything to do with Charisma checks? For how long? Uh, an hour. Sweet. Okay. I'm gonna gesture down the path and look at Travago. Please. Gunner, Amara? Uh, I guess throwing that boulder in the uh, lake did something. Yes, that was. A-Rook. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll stop. Apparently made you incredibly confident. <laughs> 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 I'm glad that helped you. <laughs> I'll start making my way down the down the path. <laughs> Let's go. Amara just shakes herself from her med- meditative state and said, "Yeah, I didn't want to do anything there. Yeah, you you guys had it. Well done. I uh, I don't think I could have done anything about that." Travago, where'd you get such a such a great uh, personality all of a sudden. <laughs> I uh, didn't think I was that convincing in performance, but uh, this demon seems a bit dim of wit. <laughs> yeah, she was stupid. <laughs> Perhaps we uh, should bug her off, though, before she does come back. She did look quite scary. Yeah, I didn't like all of her swords. I don't think I'd be able to actually punch her. Um, uh, I think I think I'd probably just hit a blade and just cut myself. It wouldn't, wouldn't be very nice. Maybe the uh, good old dart. Yeah, I would say so. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, let's go. All right. And with that, you cross the metallic bridge and you land on a rocky landing. <clears throat> the rock. The the natural. Uh, path steers across one more bridge held up by another chain and then about 30 more feet of natural rock boulders loose stone that is still rattling slightly under your feet and ahead you move in a downward trajectory Rook, your <clears throat> gaze still fixed on Agnarak. <clears throat> the um, so you know uh, the spell will drop in a total of ten minutes. Good to know. Yeah. You have no longer vision of that of that first landing that led you out after you start your way downward, although. The loose rock and natural sheer drop of this mountainside and the tremors have caused this path to be a little bit unruly and hard to navigate. So I'm going to need 
Rook, you're now back in your favorite terrain, which is mountains, is that right? I think mountains is actually a separate, uh, <clears throat> well. Because this will be classified as difficult terrain, unless it, you had that skill. I don't think it actually... Uh, it doesn't affect it? I don't know if caves and mountains are the same thing. Mountain, they are different. Yeah. Uh, it would be classified as underground if you were back in the in the caves. Yeah, I don't think uh, mountain will affect. Okay. Yeah. So with that, if you want to go at your normal pace, I'll need everyone to roll a check to see if that is succeed successful. Otherwise, you have you can roll. Sorry, you can traverse at half speed with diffi this difficult terrain, but obviously take a bit longer. It's up to you. Would I be able to use the winged boots? Just yep. To yep. Yep, hover a little bit and go, no problem at all. Sweet. Uh, also, given the uh, amount of lava and demons that are around, and the fact that we just came out of a dark cave with the undead beholder, to my knowledge, uh, I'll pull the Helm of Brilliance out of the, that Duke Ronion gave us out of the bag, and uh, if no one has wanted it uh, the couple of times it's been offered, uh, I'll pop it on the head okay which it requires attunement correct uh again new to D, &D. what does that entail exactly you need to spend some time concentrating on that item and you can only have uh, a certain amount of items attuned yeah i've got that bit, yeah. yep um so how long how long does it normally take uh gunner for you to attune to your items was it one or three hours i think it's just the hour I believe concentrating on that and that only to be able to then offer it okay, so offer not, the not effects you do while doing other like a short well rest it's type. it's it's like a short rest in that case so you could you could continue your way down um being careful on the way down but also concentrate on the magical effects that this that this helmet has while wearing it if you were doing anything else like tinkering yeah. no that focus would break all good yeah Sweet. that's what i'll be doing okay so as you put that helmet on you all watch as your vision suddenly just automatically moves to a silver glowing um, helmet over Dravago and each diamond, ruby sapphire, emerald that is on it just starts to flicker as you start to notice as well that there is that beautiful plume coming up from the back of the helmet as well that's sort of moving on its own accord and you Looks can like I'm going to carnival <laughs> pretty much and you walk down um, are you all taking half speed or are you going to attempt to make a dexterity check I rolled a 16 on the dex check good I might see if I can head up ahead um mm -hmm. So this might be what you're thinking of, Landstrider. If it's non-magical terrain, I can't become slowed. That's right. Correct. Um, I might just push up ahead um, and, and attempt to do it stealthily again. Okay. And you make your way downward and make a stealth check. And uh, Thorum, you don't have any trouble traversing this terrain as well. Mara is going to also attempt to go down uh yep and, and she does so without a problem um 24 24 sure um there are small crevices as you continue your way down and sooner rather than later you lose sight of rook as that stealth check allows you to hide behind boulders large rocks um <coughs> dips in the earth as you continue to walk and sneak your way um, downward but this entire landscape now is simply a very large angle that is going um, like a 45 degree angle with with some uh, difficult terrain but otherwise pretty pretty straight and narrow it takes you probably about without any other concern stopping you about five or so hours to move down this mountainside 
Where is the sun in the sky once we get to the bottom? Good question. The sun has set completely. However, even though the sun has Hold on, hold on, sorry, let me, let me uh, rectify that. So you had a short rest and then a long rest. Apologies. Sorry, it's, it's, there's no sun yet, but it is very, very early morn. And it's starting to come up from, sets, sets in the west, rises in the east, east. So you actually can't see the sun because it's covered by the mountain behind you. Right. So it's going to come up that way. So, but it is... Early morning. First bit of light coming up. Very barely, yes, yes. But where the other side of the mountain would look, would have dark blues and purples and stars still there, here it's almost <clears throat> like it's a sunset. No sun in the sky, but you do have this, this effect of. <laughs> you do have this effect of just daylight there's there's no well, the fire is is bringing that light into the entire surroundings from the fire pit in the far distance but it's all around you it's almost magical in nature do they have any lookouts or guards or anything make oh, yeah. a make a perception check as you continue your way down have i never seen any of that on my way forward guards yeah you also make a perception check for me. And that five hour warp, so that is attuned? It yeah. is attuned. You I now see. you now know the the effects, the ins and outs of this helmet and can use it. You go first and then ten. A ten? Okay. If there are guards on this mountainside, they are hiding themselves well. You do notice that there are small lava pools around you and the these lava pools are probably the size of what a what a general fountain would be maybe 15 feet by 15 feet in diameter and through them whirlpools and demons are sprouting forth but not paying any attention to you at all and passing this five hours you notice about probably 20 or 30 of them however there's no, to your knowledge, there's no guards per se, no warforged um, scouting or or parthing par around. What did you get? Uh, a 13. A 13? It was a perception, yeah? Yes. 13, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. So you see, gu you see um, no guards, yeah. but you do see these demonic creatures, small and large. Some of them not, uh, not winged either. They seem to be... Some of them seem to be this grotesque looking pile of slime that or of purple and black with with not burn wounds but just wounds on on their bodies that just rise up and and just move and slide around um, some of them come up and they are smaller um, bug like creatures with these sh short spears that actually do land and don't take any notice of you and, and move around, but no wall forged. How much further ahead have I been? You're probably a, a good 60 feet ahead. 60 feet. And maintaining it. <clears throat> um, while, I guess, is there a point where I would just stop and wait for these guys? Or we just if you want. Continuing on. If you want. Every now and again, during that five hour travel you can yeah. just make sure that they are catching up i'll um push out a little bit further yep. again just surveying the surroundings trying to cap stealth mm -hmm. um and i'm glad you mentioned something um i would also like to let me know if i can even do this i don't think i could maybe perceive things um attuned to the ring of protection i got Good to know. Yeah, I'll I'll get get you to do that while that five hours is, is going. Yeah, so you are essentially attuned. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I'll just push up a little bit further. Yeah. And um, just to get a better proxy on things, mm -hmm. at will detect fiend and demons. Your senses almost overwhelm you. <laughs> yeah. As it's funny, but where these lava pools are. are are set in the ground yeah you actually don't 
detect any demons or devils or mm. fiends below the surface. Mm. And it kind of makes sense from your knowledge <clears throat> of demons and fiends in that these lava pools are probably doorways mm. into other mm. realms. Kyber most likely. Yeah. That's where these beings are coming in into the material plane. And they're there is where they probably are have been in the past stopped by the Gashkala, the orcs that protect the Eldin reaches and the mountainside from this demon incursion. Yeah. But all around you there's demons visible and invisible mm. as well that are just making a um, trip here and there uh, by flying, hovering, walking, sliding. Um, it's it's just hundreds and hundreds. Rather right, getting the sense that this is more of a fortress than a just a place that they'd meet. Like things are stationed here regularly. You'd imagine that there are. <sighs> It's hard to tell. In fact, make me a history check. Um, and this is this is to do with the demon wastes in general. Yeah. Let me know if I'm doing too much because I'm attuning as well. Or was. Rook, you're just doing way too much. You're stopping yeah. your character. <laughs> It'll just, just stop it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's fine. Um, history, was it? History. Uh, that's not great. Um, four. I think it's just a four. Yeah, yeah four. Four. <laughs> Unfortunately not. There's unfortunately... Um, you don't know you, you you suddenly just forget where you are for a moment and then you remember um, but nothing else comes to mind in regards to how how people in the past have, have seen this landscape whether that this is a bastion or this is a, a, a hunting ground or what what should be populating this area you know it's not sure I'll just leave it at that okay uh, just your knowledge please uh, one of the <laughs> passive effects of that helmet is that if there are any undead that come within 30 feet of me the helmet will start to glow a dim light in that 30 foot radius and they take radiant damage at the start of their turns good to know thank you very much all right and you continue on walking side by side or in a line, how are you how are you traversing down this hill? I'm going last. Yep. Um, just be in the middle, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. But I will say to Rook, if there's uh, anywhere you deem safe to pull over, perhaps we could mm, sorry. finalize our plans with uh, approaching this. I wouldn't mind trying to catch up with your... <clears throat> Companions or your compatriots uh, before we actually engage with this. Yeah. Um, in which. Am I too far away for him to. Make me another stealth check yeah. because he's still. I mean, for, for what I gather, you're still trying to stealth your way around. Yeah. And make me a. Make me a perception check to see if you can see him enough to, to call out to him. <coughs> Why? Ah, uh, a nat 20 with a 14 on top of that. <laughs> well, I thought I was good with a 2026, 20, but I guess not good enough. Amara just looks around and says, Hey, I should be doing that. <laughs> what the hell's Rook? Who, who are we following? Who is Rook? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Which way well, are we going? I'm assuming at some Crap. point, uh, like you were doing in that five hour walk, you'll pop in and out. Wait for us or like. Yeah, uh, at, yeah. At that point, I'll ask you that. Too. If there's anywhere safe that you see, perhaps we should. Uh, yeah. In which case, is there anywhere safe that I see with what I've gathered in that wild couple of hours or whatever? Where, what do you mean by safe? Again. Somewhere to, I guess, pull over that. Like in a cafe or something. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, Where I'm not sensing so many demons or. Okay. Can't see any guards or anything like where, where that. Where there's a vantage, where there's a vantage point, point or something where. Yeah. Looking around, <clears throat> again, the the demonic beings are in in number here, and 
looking ahead, you can see the you can see now after such long travel the bottom of this mountainside where it simply flows down and then straight and looking ahead you see that there are some larger boulders around and also the what seem to be the start or already of small camps of where Warforge seem to be starting to move around. I'll just pull them aside then. Yep. Um, into this area. Uh, well, how are we uh, going to approach this situation? Uh, we briefly talked about dispelling the illusions with uh, that ring that's grumsalted for you. Do you know if you dispel the illusion? Will the Warforged be able to see, see through it? I think so. I think it will dispel the effect, the spell itself. And is there a range that you have to be to this illusion? Do we have to get up close? Can you do it from a distance? Regular dispel magic is 60 feet, but I'm not sure about this ring. With, <clears throat> with the study you've done on it, it's out of, um, outward of 120. Cheers. All right. <clears throat> so, I look around. Where would be the best place, do you think? Can we perceive the where the lake is? Yes. That can describe it. Meg, right. as, as you pass that five hour mark, you all, by the way, you're all starting to get a little um, hungry. Your legs are after just. Well, apart from you, um, uh, <laughs> Javago, your legs all start to get a little bit uh, stressed. They start to have a bit of muscle burn. You're, you're hungry. You're all sort of a little bit <clears throat> weird on the on the face of a bit of dirt and dust and debris. <laughs> but looking out, make another perception check. <clears throat> it's, uh, that one. Which is 11. 11 in total. Looking out, it's just... Now the heat is rising, and it's rising fast. Down here, you see more of these lava pools. A lot of them now just natural looking and not whirlpools. But the heat is so intense that almost <clears throat> 30 feet in front of you, that shimmer in the air is just too thick to make out almost anything beyond maybe 60 feet. Uh, well, I can't see anywhere yet. Perhaps once we get a bit further in, the Rook, do you have any means of contacting Victor? And is her back there with him? Uh, I can, yes, absolutely. Uh, well, maybe we should uh, link up with them. They surely we have some information that would be beneficial formulating a plan. Is sorry, DM question. Mm. Short rest is four hours, or is it an hour? One hour. One hour. Perhaps we should take a quick short rest here. I can reach out to them and see what we can find out. If uh, if you think it's safe enough, uh, I can accelerate short rest for you. I'm fine. The others. If you need a uh, you need a rest, uh, it has been a weary travel here, but I have means that can a ten minute nap. You'll feel like you've rested. Gonna? Um. Oh, I I don't. I yeah, I'm okay with that. At this point, I'm just gonna take out some rations right. and start eating. How are you looking? Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, I. Had this weird uh, chat with Sonari, and <clears throat> something's happening with the Corey and Ilyana, and I just got distracted. But I mean, my my monk abilities are amazing, so I'm 
I'm I'm not tired at all, really. Um, we can we can keep going. Can we just kick the Lord of the Blades yet, or um, do do we have to rest? Uh, are you in desperate need of that rest? No, no, I don't. I mean, we can. I, I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, go in um, without without any uh, any preparation. So, if anyone needs to rest, that's fine. I can meditate some more and, and uh, continue to chat with her. But um, yeah, whatever goes. Perhaps if we need it uh, in time, I can do this for three people. It would be a waste doing it for one at a time. Uh, maybe we can sneak into one of the tents later on if we do need the rest. I feel like that's a good idea. Let me reach out to Vector and see what we can find out. Uh, just before you do, you seem to be good at uh, finding all tracks back on the other side of the mountain. Have you noticed any all traveling down here? Uh, I mean, I probably I haven't been looking for them, so... You hadn't been focused on them, yeah. but as you were traveling, I'll, I'll get you to make one investigation check to see if you did notice anything on the ground which would be similar in description. Investigation, is it? Mm. God, I hope I don't lose these. Um, that is a nat 20 with a plus four. Is that like three tonight? Yeah, I'm never getting these rolls. We're going to do combat and roll ones. <laughs> uh, you absolutely were, were were eyes on the ground and you noticed a couple of things. That there were no... There, there, there were no orc footprints, but there seemed to be much larger footprints and not of demon either, but of larger humanoid figures almost giant like and other more more monstrous in appearance okay. lots of larger orc like footprints but not actual orc sized humanoid plenty of Plenty of like uh, boot, uh, boot prints that have not been covered by the earth or dust, and they the the age of the moon that looked maybe a week or so old by their nature, but there's no accompanying uh, peoples of that description around you. What you see instead are oh, and you also notice sorry one set of footprints that were about again a week old that were gnomish and the rest were wall forged footprints that heavy heavy indentation in the earth large boot metal mm. boot um yes okay um i relay that back to dravago about what i've noticed throughout um wandering through the cave mm -hmm. Um, with that thought and reminding me, um, before reaching out to Victor, I'll actually reach out to Pervac. Good. Um, noticing only a single set of gnomish uh, footprints. Mm -hmm. And um, my friend, are you within a few days? Of the fire caverns? Fire pit. Fire pit. <laughs> A moment passes and you hear back Perbach's voice. It is good to hear from you, Rook. I have been successful here, but I'm nowhere near you yet. But we are coming. I fear we're only a few yards away from the Warforged, the Lord of Blades, and also perhaps the demon that's keeping these illusions. We are a few days away, but I have friends. Many friends. Giants out of interest? All types. Ogres. Ettons. An army, an army of, th of the three, 
the three hags of the demon wastes who looked down on this valley and, sh and with luck and with bargaining I did have to give them the crown but that was enough and they do not like these beings enroaching on their lands that they have claimed to be their own. <clears throat> this is good news then. They... They are unfortunately wanting more once and if they can overcome the Warforged and their allied demonic beings. But that conversation has not been had yet. They also don't want me to... They also want me here with them as a guarantee. And the, Ga the Galashgar as well. The orcs that protect uh, the Eldin Reaches and Corvair. They want our, our troop altogether. It's not imprisonment, but it might as well be. Mm. I am not safe here, but it is of good will, good will that, I, that I don't leave. Perhaps after this, then, myself, you, Victor, and there is a possibility you even Agnorak <clears throat> can assist you? Perhaps. We'll see to this dealing. Perhaps. What, what are your movements? What do you need? Right now we're in the thick of it and I'm not too sure. We're heading towards one of the heralds of Frazzle Bloom, hopefully to end the illusion and see some of the Warforged inside the camp close by turn on or flee, possibly side with your army, I'm unsure, from the Lord of Blades. Be careful. What of Hagnarak? As far as I know, he's of some sort of life, but melded with the Lord of Blades. How, I'm not too sure, but Onatar seems to think we are able to save him. And you know nothing more of how this has happened? Of how he's reshaping himself? Yes. Or how Onatar is Agnorak? I have no idea. I'm assuming it has something to do with what he had, his camp in the Mornlands, some kind of reforging process. He's also stealing the essence of the living as well. What do you mean? We might recap myself. The blood and he and and um Perbach yeah. says the blood of these human humanoids that you explained to me before that's still happening uh, as, as far as I can understand <clears throat> a horrible thing be warned the three crones will not abide by this their intentions is to simply destroy the warforged as they stand be quick if you're meaning to keep him alive and free, Agnorak, because the hags will not be lenient, as lenient. Mm. They will destroy it. For it's an abomination to them and an incursion, and they will not stop. I'm afraid that, depending on what happens down here, that may be all that can be done. Agnorak's life is a slim chance to be saved, but it's one I'd like to take. As I, I also share your opinion, so do what you can. And is there anything else you can offer for us? Any guidance? All I would advise is if you take too long and you see a cloud of dust in the air from the north, start running. And so we can see up into the, out of this cavern, is that right? You are way beyond the cavern. Yeah, okay. You're in the, you're in the, you're in the plains. You are 
out in the open. Okay. So and you've gone down. No, that's right. You've gone down that hill, mm. and you uh, you can see the north and the south on the horizon. Okay. Um, I turn turns to the others and Perbach and the three crones have mustered an army and they're just a few days away or a few hours even if we're going to do something we're going to need to do it quickly I'm going to turn to Gunnar Gunnar do you remember when we were at the what's the name of our castle I keep forgetting Palace <coughs> uh, Tower, Tower. Tower. Tower right we went at Palace Tower do you remember when we were at the, in that inn and you managed to freeze all of us in the dancing guests in the ballroom below you. That was the castle. <laughs> the castle. <laughs> <laughs> the power of Oprah did fly, sort of flowed through you. Yes. Well, could you do that again here, when the time is right? I, I guess I could try. Does this not put you at risk, though? Remember, it was not long after that when you sent Melestra to the plane of water. You fell unconscious and <clears throat> none of us could wake you, save for uh, Kips. Kips woke me up? At the five's rest, Thorum uh, tried his magics. Oh, yes, that's right. I Mara probably tried to slap you. <clears throat> <laughs> I can't remember exactly. Um, but uh, you were out for some time. <laughs> um, it puts everyone at risk. Perhaps as a clutch move, then I wouldn't want to see you fall to harm trying to uh, trying to do this at the hands of Overton. I still uh, do not know much about him, but. Given his actions and how he seems to affect you, I do not trust him. Yeah, there's not... He hasn't given us much to trust. Was he not the one who was freezing the other armies, stopping them from <coughs> impeding the Lord of Blades' movement to this place? Yeah, yes, it, w it was him, um, but I think it, it's not just them, it's not, it, it's not like he wants to help any particular side, he just wants everyone to disappear. Doesn't sound like someone that you should be using his powers through you. What's to say he doesn't uh, feel the same about you in the end? He doesn't seem to me like the type of person who would be doing this out of goodwill or friendship. I dare say he probably wants whatever powers you have, or at least to use your powers for himself. I don't know what he wants. His motives do, uh, do confuse me if he allows you to send Molestra, an agent of this Fraser Blue, to an alternate plane, yet he stops armies from impeding his entry into this world. I don't see him aligned with anyone but himself. But he's caution at using his powers. If you do, I would, I would say hold off. That's do not uh, harm yourself in the process. Yeah. I haven't tried in a while. How far are we from the beginnings of the, of the main camp? Looking out and speaking together, you all look and see that there's no, there's no wall or perimeter really that, that commences this mass of tents, large and small, all white and red, but the white is now covered or being covered by the, uh, the environment of dust. And you see that it first starts as little dots 
every maybe a couple of hundred feet away from each other, a camp or two and some and a couple of tents around. And then that density becomes more and more as the as the 30 and 60 foot increments get further in. So the closest campsite in front of you is probably about 90 feet in front of you now. And then it becomes just more packed and more packed until in the far distance you see nothing but white and red as these tents, large and small, cover in front of you, cover your, your sight. Is this the Warforge camp? And, and, and mulling between them, some with some on sort of guard, it seems looking outward in your direction, general direction, some people, some of these Warforge looking in other directions, all wearing these red capes, um, signs of being soldiers of the Lord of Blades. Our Warforge just dotted. Um, I'll reach out to Victor, if possible. Mm -hmm. Victor, are you there? Another couple of seconds pass. <laughs> yes, Rook. Are you in the camp? Beyond the pit of fire? At the pit. Cannot, cannot speak for long. The Lord of Blades requires my service. Understanding where the Lord of Blades was with my previous location spell, we were heading towards him still. Correct. Even though we're, so I guess with time and distance, if he was to be in the same spot, how far would he be? If he were in the same spot, probably another, <laughs> probably another hour or so travel directly ahead if you're in the camp we're only an hour away very well things are not going his way Tiamat is not responding to his questions he is becoming angry she simply looks and stares from the fire pit as her heads emerge every now and again, but nothing, nothing else is promised. His attempts have failed. He's becoming enraged. He kills Warforged back and forth. Do you feel molds he them? His magics were Tiamat's or Frazzle Bloom. That it would be easier to sway him. We know of where a hell herald is that may be keeping this illusion up. I'm not sure. He's, he's crazed. He might listen to reason, but in this state, he might not. In, in any effect, what may calm him is some sort of answer from Tiamat herself. But I don't know how that is going to come about if, if this is all not as it seems. I fear that he will not get an answer from Tiamat for his frazzle bloom. I understand. In which case he will continue to lash out wildly. There are prisoners here, Rook. People that he has gathered from the demon waste that were living. And barbarians, yes, but innocents. Just making their own way and he's killing them. Making these horrid experiments continued and these are the these are the beings he is I, I just don't know what to do, do you I'm feel afraid that, I might be next do you feel that Rag Ragav <laughs> Agnarak is able to be saved from the Lord of Blades I think at the moment if they are sharing a mind, then it's the Lord of Blades that wins at the moment, currently. That's his power that is emerging more and suppressing Agnarax. 
in this state of mind. I shouldn't keep you for too long. I don't want you to be in danger. Perbach is just on the horizon, maybe a day or a few hours, and he brings an army with him. Things will be coming to a close soon. Uh, that is not bode, that does not bode well for this scenario. If they, if they should attack, then again, he, he might do something that we do not expect, and that is not <clears throat> ideal. Keeping him here, entwined in this, is probably the best way to keep him out of harm's way. Should, should we st attempt to stop that army from coming in, until you attempt to convince him otherwise, convince Agnorak to, uh, to see reason. Mm. This yeah, is just yeah. a conversation at the moment that's happening in your mind, Rook. Yeah, yeah, but so go on. Ask is how it looks. Do you speak out loud or anything? Or? Uh, no, it's just in yeah. in my yeah. mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't even know how to say Ragnarok. Talk to him. Remind him of who we are, who we were, and perhaps you and your companions, with your prowess, can find a way. So you're asking me to face the Lord of Blades. I'm asking you to face Agnorak. I feel this may be quite difficult and this will put everybody else in danger as well. Well, surely yourself, you can't keep your disguise. Not for very long. But I will join you in, in the in the discussion, in the convincing when I can. You'll see me when you see the Lord of Blades, but don't reveal me straight away. How much time do you think? I'll come in at the right time. Do we have longer than 24 hours? He's not going anywhere, but he simply kills it erratic erratically. So... However long you deem fit, but as as you wait longer, the body count rises. I'll um, <laughs> I'll need to discuss this with my friends. Very well, I must leave. Be safe. And you. Um, and then I turn and let them know the conversation that ha happened and that Victor is asking me to speak up to, to the Lord of Blades. You must face him and we'll face him with you. This may deroute us from heading towards the Herald. I think the dispelling the illusion first would be beneficial. <coughs> may help us get the Warforged army. If not to align with us, maybe disperse. You've spoken before of defectors that Victor is mentioned. Do you yes. know the reason they were defecting? Yes, because the Lord of Blades has just become mad and is killing his own troops. <coughs> and surely, given the conversation you just relayed, that would uh, make those who were thinking about leaving more inclined to if he's on a rampage doing so. I mean, this is what I hoped for, but I'd imagine the ones that are still here uh, may be crazed. It's only something we can try and hope for the best. And uh, what of Agnorak? Do you have any thoughts on what we can do to separate him or save his soul? I'm not sure. I have no idea how this feat is going to be done. I'd have to reach out to possibly to Onatar for greater guidance, but it all has been very vague in regards to how to successfully pull on Onatar. Sorry, pull Agnorak out of the shell of the Lord of Blades. Is there anything in your psionic talents that would lead to any information on this? Well, well actually, um, may maybe. Um, I didn't realise that this was something that we wanted to do, so I haven't really thought about it. Um, what what um he was a, 
a person um, with thoughts and emotions. Agnorak was, yes. Maybe. I'm getting the understanding that maybe the minds of all those that have melded with the Lord of Blades are somehow trapped inside of him. Well, yeah. Um, it may not just be Agnorak that we can save. A mind is not a singular thing. It's made up of lots of different pieces. Mm. Um, and so even if it is in there it might not be whole in in itself it, it might be broken yes I, this is what I fear even if we are able to reach out to him we may be tortured too much but we won't know unless we try I can try but what about this illusion that you wanted to dispel uh hoping that this ring <clears throat> boldened by Grunch's uh, favour will work. So either can we get to the Herald and dispel the illusion there or we get to the Lake of Fire. Can I see it? I hold up my hand back to so wearing the illusion. Yeah. I hold up my hand and I come a little quite closer so you can really inspect it. Uh, it looks if I'm right, it's a sterling silver ring and it has my insignia of Ada Ado Sculpt on the front, but it's complete with the two dragon heads coming off the side as well. Do you want me to remove them? Wait, no, no, no. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Preston doesn't remember. You, you gave it to him. No, you guys had it oh, before right. I ever met you. Ah, oh. Grosh, yeah. the orc god, enchanted uh, it to make his more powerful. Oh, okay. Right. Um, <clears throat> I must have missed that bit. Okay. Um, this is a magic that I don't understand, I guess. Then um, it looks like it's a divine... A divine magic? Yes, I would say so. Does it only work for you? No, I don't think so. This particular ring does, but it is a divine in nature, yes. Um, I think I, I think it'll take some time to get used to it and be able to use it, but otherwise, yeah. Do you want it? No. Well, whoever wields it should be one able to get close enough to use it on the illusion of Tiamat. So I believe 120 feet, you were saying. Yeah. So either someone who can turn invisible. What what does it what does it do though? It dispels the illusion and reveals the true nature of things. How? I don't know. You go like this, you say go. <laughs> Are you casting <laughs> a spell? Yeah. Is it yes, casting it a, spell? a spell? Yes, definitely. So like it dispel magic. Something like that. It's very vague. To your, to your knowledge, uh, the description is this spell gives the willing creature you touch the ability to see things as they actually are. So, um, so you notice, it's like it is true, true sight or true seeing, correct? So it basically just, if there is, say someone is not actually there, but, but they, they want to make it out to be, this ring would make them disappear. And, and not for them or everyone? From, for, for everyone in that area. 120 feet. Right. I also have other magic I can use to dispel illusions. I think... I think we might need that um, more so. Right. Because 120 feet isn't that far. Right. And there's probably a lot more people that we need to affect than just that range. Right. Like whoever wields the ring should also have the ability to sneak through the camp <coughs> unnoticed. Yeah. Either. I'm going to hand that ring and I'm going to take the ring off. <laughs> Who do you suggest? Well, <laughs> Amara <laughs> has 
been quite stealthy in the past. And I yeah, but what if he hits me? I did create the uh, item for you to change your appearance, which is more than illusion. You actually physically change. So, so you, you reckon I should be a, a Warforged? I assume uh, pick someone from the crowd. Look similar to them. Emblazoned with the red cloak of the Lord of Blades. Followers. I don't like metal. Oh. Right, no. right, right, right. <laughs> Not you. You, you, you look, <laughs> you're different. It's fine on you. It's good yeah. for you. You're fine. Not for me, though. Um, the end of the ring of uh, true sight. It's too um, big for me. Oh, no, they're expensive. It fits. Um, do we see this DM- Tiamat illusion yet? No, not from not from where you are. It seems like, from the description that that you gave Rook, it seems like it, her sort of her mass appears above that surface of the fire pit only every now and again. So it seemed like at that time there there wasn't okay. something emerging. Could I just clarify? We're like right next to the camp, aren't we? You're, you're probably about 90 feet away from the first group of tents. And we're not, none of us are stealth, but maybe me. Correct. Um, but have the Wolf Forge noticed us? It doesn't, if there or does, paying attention? they don't seem, to be, don't seem to be paying attention. If they have noticed you, there's been no one that is coming up towards you or taking extra curious uh, uh, looks. <clears throat> I'm not even sure if they care that we're here at the moment. No, they don't seem to be particularly on alert. No. Perhaps they just think that we're after the encounter with that demon that we're just mercenaries or bandits following the rest of the armies here. I wouldn't push our luck though. The Warforged and Euro didn't take long to realise who we are. Mm. The, uh, Newspapers have been talking about you since before I knew you. Perhaps your fame might come back to bite you. Mm. Well, I <laughs> but uh, I, I do have my own motives here. I'd like to try and disperse this army rather than have them fight the three hags army that Perbach sits with at the moment. Mm. The more souls we can save, the happier I'll be. I also uh, will be keeping an eye out for this Aaron Buchanan that I've mentioned. <laughs> Just uh, following up on the rumours that he may be within this camp. If uh, the Lord of Blades has been using a creation forge, there is a good chance that uh, Aaron Buchanan is involved. Mm. I'd like to see what his uh, intentions and motives are here, if he does happen to be here. But uh, obviously, my main concern will be with our party and their safety and getting rid of these demons that try to come to this plane. So it's the Lord of Blades first then, or? I think that is most pertinent. Uh, if we can I mean, we make, don't him, even make need him look to. like a fool who has chased a false idol, and if he is on a rampage destroying Forged in his own following, it may be wise to disperse that first, use that information to try and convince the Forge to leave this area. What what if we ask to um, submit to Tiamat and have him bring us before her? That's not a bad idea. He'll take us right to her. And then we spring our trap. Could possibly work, but have you not meddled with him in the past? Would you believe that suddenly <clears throat> we've... We would have to do it publicly. So he didn't have a choice. There's an option. I... Myself would prefer the sneakier approach. Dispel the magic. I'd like to try and convince the Warforged. I'll do everything I can to seem uh, more prevalent to them. I have a couple of ideas. Maybe, maybe you could stay hidden then. You, you weren't there last time. 
he likes the spectacle. I can uh, I can alter myself the same as the item that I gave to Amara to look like one of the regular Warforged in his camp. Yeah. And uh, perhaps once we have to spell the illusion, I can reveal myself. Give one of those speeches that confuse the demon. Something of that nature. Yeah, that was really good. I was winging it. I did not think it was going to work. <clears throat> I'm willing to be captured, but if I'm bound or gagged, I won't be able to cast the magic which will dispel the illusion. Is there a way for us to become invisible or disguised as well? I can cast yeah. past without a trace, but we'll be really, really close to lots of other of these Warforged Amara pipes up. So maybe we have Amara um, hidden completely, you in plain sight, but hidden. And then us three can submit. And when he decides to make a spectacle and bring everyone together, that's when we pull the rug out from underneath him and dispel his illusions. It is possible for uh, both Mara and myself to disguise ourselves as members of his retinue and bring you forth to him. Mm. Yeah, but... Um, if you're in front, you could get caught. Whereas if you're off to the side, no one's going to be paying attention to you. But I will look literally like no, one that, of the other Warforged. Yeah, you can look like them, but do you know what they know? I could. You're not part of their army. They will discover it eventually. Wouldn't it be better to be away from the attention so you can do what you need to do without scrutiny I feel like we know enough then how would you uh, how would you three get close then if not escorted by members we, like we can own? walk in just give yourself up yeah I do have the ability to <clears throat> amalgamating both plans I can cast fame death on myself you take me in there as a prize Yes. How would you like us to say you died? <laughs> How do you want to do this? <laughs> How do you want to die? Um, Amara pops and says, I'd be happy if, if you say that I slapped you until you died. I will hit you with my staff until you died or headbutted you until you died. Um, happy to do any of those things. Well, the, I believe the two that would be taking me in that would be disguised as the Warforged because surely you can use your imagination. All right, so what's happening? If you're worried about it, then I can, I can be the distraction while you guys stay out. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to go with you. I'm... I just worry that if we're all together and you bring us in, the part, the, the plan could fall apart very quickly, and then we're all caught. As long as you feel comfortable that you won't be attacked on site. We may be, but then the plans come undone anyway. I don't think there's really a safe way of doing this. Yeah. Either either way is going to <clears throat> arouse suspicion at some point. It's just mitigating it. Is it possible to? Uh, is it possible to uh, contact Victor again? Perhaps he said the Lord of Blades is in a fit at the moment, mm. and he's looking for a way to calm him. If he brought the three of you in. Yeah. That's a good idea. That's it. Victor, are you available? <laughs> but for a moment. Are you dating someone? Like some, I might have a plan uh, after our conversation. Uh, quickly. It's a shotty one. Meet us outside the camp. Two of our friends are going to be disguised as Warforged. I'm going to be playing the part of death. And another, I believe, is going to be pretending to be captured. Bring us in with your disguised retinue and seek a, seek the Lord of Blades' attention. Very well. I will try and excuse myself from this position and no more communication happens. Okay. Uh, we have to go ahead with this plan now. If you are dead, the other two should look 
at least somewhat uh, like you've been in a scrap. Well, that depends how he died. Um, what if he ate some berries and we're off and just... <laughs> Shat myself to death. Yes. <laughs> That's what it says on this very piece of paper. <laughs> 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 well then those berries I foraged at the top of the yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, if you're going to play the, the part of the dead rook perhaps I can uh, help with the other two and I'll reach out and touch both of you <clears> just, uh, I guess on the face and use the magical tinkering effect to um, give a Static visual effect and just put uh, bruises and wounds on you. So it looks like you've been uh, beaten up, but you actually haven't. Okay. This and is this is much better. I thought just you were to go with to just, me a bit. <laughs> just to go with your uh, angry eyebrows too. That's a uh, permanent effect unless I die or choose to uh, end it. And that's the very first time you've heard uh, the words. And- um, as well as those eyebrows. And then Mara <laughs> looks at you, Dravaga, and says, What are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Eyebrows. Nothing, nothing. I'm envious. It's fine. They're so thick. I'm going to check that out later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, as you are all waiting, <laughs> you all watch as <clears throat> soon... Probably only about 15, 20 minutes goes by as you are all preparing to go in ahead with this plan into the bowels of the Lord of Blades army with the knowledge of uh, Victor who will be accompanying you in. And you see just beyond, after that 20 minute mark passes, a figure with about 17 or 18 other Warforged. Swords and shields out. (coughs) Sorry to interrupt. Walking towards you. During that 20 minutes, can I just make a quick prayer to honor her? Sure. (laughs) Um, I, I'm not expecting a response or anything, okay. but um, I just clasp my hands um, by a hammer and anvil on a tar. We're going to see to do your bidding. Now's the time to show yourself in support for your kin and your children. Bless us here. Make a religion check for me. Finally, they're coming. Not one. Monitor <laughs> <laughs> is not real. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you utter those words and you wait a moment and silence is the reply. <clears throat> As we all need to um, <laughs> hydrate and do a little dance as we (laughs) close off this half, this first half, which has taken away too long, with a bit of a dance. Yeah. Let's do the dance of a break. Let's do the dance of a break. Let's do the dance of a break dance. 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 Let's get on the table and do the worm. (laughs) (laughs) Bang. Yeah, the whole thing just collapses. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, and with that we're going to take a 10 minute break uh, we're a bit bit behind sorry to uh, to keep everybody uh, but after the break we will announce our the winner. winner of our giveaway and uh, what does the dance look like well you've just seen it um, I mean to describe it it was oh, a right. <laughs> yeah it was a flow of, of a ultimate flail and a dance flail yeah like festival <laughs> Like, yeah. like an octopus with brain damage. There we go. Octopus with, with, with brain damage. Um, <laughs> we'll see everybody in 10 minutes. See you soon.
and welcome back everybody uh we've got a giveaway so uh hi um let's <laughs> yell out who won and i'll let i'll let good old rook to do the honors yeah uh, uh all right so so happy and delighted and pleased to announce to at au gateway yeah. You are the winner of some beautiful edge palette and glasses from Meeples and Dragons. Um, also purchasable from there. And along with a Titan D20 um, anti-matter dice, uh, which is no longer in run. So quite a unique bit of dice there. Amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, send your address details to us in our uh, Twitter. And we will send that through to Meeples and Dragons, who will send you out that uh, glass post haste. And uh, obviously, we'll send you out this dice. So you may get them at different times, uh, but do not fret uh, and enjoy uh, drinking from a lovely paladin glass. Lovely. All right. <laughs> With that in mind, let us commence the shorter second half of this campaign session. And <laughs> <laughs> As the retinue of Victor comes closer and closer to you. You see the tents around you, the, the, the flaps of, of the doors and the entranceways open and more Warforged seem to be appearing out of these makeshift homes and the spots in which they are guarding or simply waiting. Go on. Have yourself and Amara disguised yourself yet? Uh, <clears throat> not yet. It's an hour long, so wait till we need to before we do. Right. Um, and once, with time, obviously, I'm going to be casting Vain Death on myself when everyone's ready to rock and roll. Okay. <clears throat> They're probably about maybe coming up to 70 feet away. They're taking their time, um, but they are kind of getting closer. You seem to be over or just next to sort of a fairly large pile of rocks that you notice could obscure your doings from the people that are coming towards you. So there is sort of a rocky outcrop about 30, 30 to 40 feet away um, as well. Just bear that in mind. I'm going you know, to mutter to yourself and Mara. You should hide and disguise yourselves before they get here. Victor can probably be trusted with these others. Uh, if Rook trusts Victor, I would trust his judgment, but I don't think he knows what our plan is. I've told him. Okay. I think uh, I'm just uh, concerned that it would take time to get to the center of this camp if we do the disguise to where the uh, Amara's oh, item has quite a few charges. I do not. Right, okay. All right, never mind. I'm just being over cautious. I'm being very sneaky in my helm of brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. So, just so you know, as I cast, when I cast a spell, mm -hmm. I am aware of very little. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> I am blinded and I will be incapacitated, so I won't be able to move while this uh, spell is in effect. But I should still be able to hear, yeah. Can you drop it? I can drop it, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so um, let me know. Just speak my name. And I will come. When you wish me to uh, drop this in an advantageous place. Or obviously if danger, if the conversation doesn't go so well. Uh, if you're aware of, uh, able to listen, I'm sure you'll, yes. Yes. except for yourself, but uh, I'm sure someone will give you the signal. <coughs> yes, the safe word will be broke. <laughs> in case there's something I'm seeing that I can't, <laughs> I can hear, but I can't see, so. If anyone touches me inappropriately, I'd like yes, to know. Say the safe word and we'll stop. <laughs> Seek you, come on. Okay. <laughs> oh, 
Wow. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, they are probably about 40 feet away now. And lining this makeshift looking border that surrounds the first of many, many, many camps, hundreds and hundreds. You see a familiar face, Rook, finally, of Victor at the head. Um, if they're, are they looking in our direction or? They are coming towards you, yes. Do you trust that uh, Victor would have brought people privy to his plan? Or should we disguise ourselves now? If you can disguise yourself now, I would. Oh. <laughs> and then I would. I would. <laughs> I thought you already did that. Yeah. <laughs> 40 feet. Uh, I'll, I'll use Alter Self on me. Yep. Amara has that same spell in her item. And I'll yep. look just like a regular old Warforge that has been mo moseying around the camp, same mm -hmm. uh, attire and mm -hmm. everything. Uh, but I'll just kind of look like a, uh, a bit of a poorly put together one. One that would mm -hmm. not draw attention as a battler or anything uh, so maybe a bit of a weird gate in his yep. walk and uh, a couple of springs poking out okay I'm dead <laughs> you you will all see Rook just instantaneously <clears throat> collapse to the floor I guess I'll straighten him out a bit okay uh, then <laughs> yeah I like the way you're lying like uh, I'll draw my weapon mm -hmm. and kind of hold it, point it out at them, uh, and gesture for Amara to do a similar action. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, I guess what, keep an eye on the approaching retinue. Okay. The 25 odd Warforge now directly behind Victor stop with the hand that he raises. And he himself comes forward. The, the, the 30 feet uh, more, that is that divide between you and a very nonchalant, calm, but focused Warforged army. And Victor gets closer, stops right next to you all and glances down towards Rook and whispers, just generally. He has died then. Yes, until such time as you need him. Yes. <laughs> and who are... <laughs> who are acting as us, our <clears throat> own, yourself, we have not met. Uh, perhaps now is not the time for lengthy introductions, but uh, I would like, idea. I would like to trust you first before I take my friend and companion forth. Well, I've fought alongside them. I've come here to <laughs> save as many war forces as I can from this idiot lord of ways, but our disguises will not last long. We'll make haste then. How long will it last? Uh, about an hour. That's enough time. And your uh, companions here, are they with you? Or should we act accordingly? I, I act alone, which is why I've come to you on my own. I act as a close aide to the Lord of Blades, but no one else listens to my pleas in the night when I ask them to, to escape his clutches his dominion so they are all with him and this is where we risk all <clears throat> just quickly Rook passed on that the Lord of Blades is on a rampage destroying Warforged are there any that were popular amongst the ranks and do you know their names any that were popular amongst the ranks in his army that were killed that were killed he treats everyone as fodder None were above others. It has been some effort and 
a task in itself for me to get this close. But even I'm not trusted by him. He keeps me on a short chain, making sure I'm not out of sight for all but the most important tasks. And this seems to be one of them, for he has let me go to collect you, for he knows of the five. He is very aware and has been trying to avoid you, avoid your movements until now, where he does not have anywhere else to run. He must, he must confront you as you must confront him. And Agnarak, I can do nothing and have been able to do nothing to try and coerce Agnarak <coughs> to leave leave the Lord of Blades' mind. I, I know nothing of the why behind his decisions. Yeah, may have misunderstood. I was asking if the Warforge that Lord of Blades had killed had any significance within the other members of the army. Rook has spoken of defect, defectors uh, angry at the Lord of Blades' treatment. There's people that could escape were defectors. <coughs> Those that couldn't do not have a voice anymore. Their voice has been silenced. So no, none living are, are uneasy about his <coughs> rampages and his rule. They are loyal 100% it seems, while he still lives. And do you have any advice on avoiding combat with the entire army? Should we have to engage the Lord of Blades himself? He is vain. He is proud and he is strong. He is very confident. No doubt, as he has had before with other champions that have tried to block his way, he will force others to stand aside while he slaughters them. Solo. Perhaps his hubris will be his downfall. Do any of you have questions for him before you leave? I believe Rook has a question. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <coughs> Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> then shall we make haste? And so, the two Warforged here, you are claiming to have a member of the five? Is that, is, is that what is planned uh, we have three one perished and two that have been captured and that is that is Gunnar and that is Thor Char and Thor very Ooh, well contradicted God <laughs> no, just good obviously. very well Turning back slightly, he yells and commands the crowd behind him. It is true. The five have been defeated. But silence again as the Warforged don't shout or celebrate, but simply in two swift motions. <laughs> slam their swords into their shields and it echoes through the plain. Come. And he, Victor turns and starts to head back towards the crowd. Um, yeah. Move, you dog. Give Thor, Thor a little nudge in the back. Amara pipes up in, in uh, Warforged form. Y yeah, yeah. Uh, who's who's picking up Brooke? I guess I'll, I'll double back. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead, right? Uh, I can't help him. I'm really I'm really skinny, and 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 not very strong. But I can help if you want. Uh, perhaps if I struggle, you can give me a hand, uh, and I'll attempt to pick up Brooke. Okay. Um, make a strength check, but uh, Mara does seem to be helping, so do so with advantage. Uh, 
That's a nine. A nine? Um, I might have to <laughs> flash of genius myself again. <laughs> <laughs> that'll work if you're doing that. Uh, so that'll be a 14. A 14, yep. So that is, that is enough with Amara's help. You two hold up the still body of Rook and you are now carrying him in front of Char and Thorum. Now, just to clarify, they are not bound or anything like that. Is that right? Uh, no. So I'll attempt to, well, half carrying Rook, still keep that <laughs> sword pointed at them yep. uh, to keep up appearances. Yep. But uh, okay. hopefully Victor will pick up on that fact and <laughs> <laughs> look like they're not walking freely. Sure. It doesn't seem to matter as the confidence of the army surrounding you all seem to be enough for them to not be concerned as they part and you are led in to the thick of the camps. You beeline it straight and then past many white and red tents, the ground beneath you no longer tremoring. And silently, every now and again, the scrape of a metallic foot as a warforge turns to watch you go by. All clean, all without wounds or scrapes on their person, seemingly like they've never seen battle, these warforged, all looking very similar but ever so, ever so slightly different in some facial features and sort of upper torso, things that you can see. But they all appear to be almost identical in their appearance. These tall, almost like they're wearing a full metal mask with broad shoulders and these small gaps within their shoulder blade armor and their chest armor and 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 um, and body shape that you can see within you can see because you're so close only a couple of feet away from them as they hunch or they they gather around you can see the little cords that connect and every now and again you notice that there's a warforge that seems to have another pipe of sorts that seems to be filtering a red liquid throughout. <clears throat> These particular beings appear to have a, this sort of bubbling sound coming from them. And their eyes appear to be red, glowing. You probably pass about five or, five or ten of them. If, if you count as you continue your way through as these beings seem to be affected by this sort of experiment <clears throat> that the Lord of Blades was, was hoping to achieve something from back in the Mornland and you pass by more tents the heat rises all of you are quite sweating Welcome, welcome, Basement Thesaurus. Glad to have you here. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> you all appear to start sweating profusely as the heat becomes more and more intense as you get closer and closer. Now, out of curiosity, feign death. Mm. What status of life are you? I believe... Um... <clears throat> immortal immortal yeah that's a good that's a good state state of being um necromancy it doesn't really say the spell duration or until you use an action to touch the targets to dismiss the spell blah blah blah, blah. the target is blinded and incapacitated and okay it's, yeah blinded and incapacitated good to know all right you all do notice, while especially you, Dravaga, that Rook does appear to be sweating as well. And are the other Warforged 
Make a perception check to see if they are, are noticing this change in the deceased member of the five. It's a 14. 14. Looking around, you do notice that one or two seem a bit more curious, but you're walking quite quickly, so they don't seem to get a chance to answer Can I the question. Say. Yeah, please. Uh, you, uh, so the creature put into a cata, cata, catatonic. catatonic state that is indistinguishable from death. Good to know. All right, with that, no one seems to notice. And in fact, the sweating is very, very minor compared to you all. So much so that it's very unlikely that, uh, that this would be called out. Oh, hydrate. Thank you very much. Very nice. So, while Victor is leading you towards where this Herald of Darkness and the Lord of Blades are, are you doing anything? I can't do anything. <laughs> I'm on for the right here. Uh, I'm just keeping up appearances, maybe the occasional um, little shove or poke with the uh, the weapon, not to do damage, but to shuffle along. I'm, I'm going to shuffle as I'm injured, like keep, keep good on my mm. bruises, etc. Not look like I'm at full health. Are these, aside from the Warforged, are there any are there any prisoners in the camp? Is there anything of that nature? Make a perception check for me. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Just beyond this line of almost like a tunnel of Warforged that are, that are biding their their time and looking at you. Just beyond them, you do notice in between that there are prisoners that are tending to these campfires and cooking for them. Humanoids. A lot of them orcs. A lot of them halflings. Humans. Very almost bandit-like in appearance with, with dirty tunics and, and pants and this very fierce look around about them, but they're all in chains. And then you notice that there are also demons in this area as well that seem to be milling around and talking to the, any warforged that are not looking at you directly. They seem to be whispering to each other. Go on. Do you remember about the demons from earlier when we were telling them about how we were um, we defeated the five? To be honest with you, they look much of a muchness. There are many in there that look very similar, but make me a uh, make me a history or or I kind of check it up to you. Uh, that would be... That's a five. A five? <coughs> they all look very much the same. It's hard to tell. I have burnt my gaze. Yeah. Keep my head down. Okay. Uh... While we're going through the camp, our main focus will be keeping up appearances, uh, but uh, I'll be also just occasionally glancing out to see if I see any trace of this Aaron de Kenneth based on sure. uh, stories that were told uh, back in Sigil. Okay. Uh, and I have a passive perception of 20. A passive perception of 20. <laughs> well then. <laughs> um, at the moment, no. At the moment, you don't notice any any humanoid that might be um, uh, fitting the description of the one of the heads of the house, no. Um, but you are keeping your eye out, I, I acknowledge that. And given the accounts from the Morgrave Library yep. of the house I ran to Traveller mm -hmm. that um, spoke of the creation <coughs> forge being mm -hmm. used, uh, I'll keep an eye out for anything that looks similar like it could to be that. that as well. Yeah, sure. All right. And you 
Uh, Gunner, you were gonna or Char, you were gonna say something. Um, while we were walking, um, and you mentioned we noticed was was it all of us who noticed these Warforged or just? Uh, the, no, you all <coughs> noticed the Warforged with these uh, with the blood flowing through them as well. What are they doing? These these particular <coughs> ones are still looking at you, but. They have a lot more emotion in their face, in their glowing eyes mm-hmm. and their faces. They look like they are just looking almost hungrily. Leering. Yeah, at you all. Okay. So they don't look sympathetic towards our cause? Doesn't seem to be. <clears throat> okay. And uh, these red tubes, mm. they're exposed? Some of them are, yes. They're outside. <clears throat> Some of them are... are connected outside of the the metal mm-hmm. that makes up their arms hmm. um any of them that aren't on the front like maybe behind make a perception check for me um 22 22 there are two of them that seem to have more connectors around their shoulders and neck, yes. That are sort of coming up on both on the left-hand side, about 15 feet away. Um, as we walk past them, um, I want to just give one of the tubes a little yank with my uh, mage hand and see what happens to it. Okay. <clears throat> so as you pass or before or after? Sorry. Uh, before I get there. Before Just you bef- get there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. As you summon this hand and it reaches out, you see it holding quickly one of this, these connected pipes and yanking it back. And you watch as this pipe is severed completely from the rest of the neck um, that this Warforge seems to have. Um, and a moment passes and it seems like this, this pipe is just blurting out this red dark liquid and nothing seems to occur. Okay. And then two warforged from the opposite side as you're going towards these two simply take out their swords that they had sheathed and they strike this other warforged in in the same area in that neck and oh wow okay yeah cool both hit one a crit That'll do it. It completely <clears throat> severs the head of this Warforged as this Warforged just shrieks. <clears throat> a very human shriek as the head is completely out of the body, disconnected. And more of this blood shoots up into the air as the body just slams onto the floor. Immediately, the Warforged starts to look around to see what was the cause of this. Yes. Where the, where the head was separated from the body, I've seen that before on other watch ball, like what for? Which for? I've done it too, sorry. <laughs> um, is this the same or is the, are the internals a little different? Looking at it, the it's internals look a little different. You notice that there is flesh <clears throat> where otherwise warforged connectors and metal plating would be a lot more flesh seems that this particular creature is almost half half in how it how it's made up or was mm-hmm. or was uh, in that case I'm going to use mess so I'm going to as I'm shuffling along I'm going to lift up my uh, grip my uh, symbol of Edo in both hands and I'm going to act like I'm praying out of desperation but really I'm using message to speak to all of you quietly and I'm just going to say these warforged the ones with the red pipes they seem to have been made from the living <coughs> as in living creatures made from flesh 
Can we respond? Yeah, you, can just, you, have yeah, to speak? you can all respond. You can all respond. Then you don't have to speak it out loud. You can respond. Uh, are you sure it's that way, or potentially the other way around? Warforge being made into flesh and blood. Oh. I don't know. Oh, well, I continue to pray. <laughs> <laughs> There's flesh. That's all. That's all. Yeah. Amara simply responds to you and says, Well, that's shit. <laughs> Classy Amara. <laughs> no point. Nice. And you continue as there's a very swift movement, and two other Warforged go just beyond the one that had um, been severed. <clears throat> And very shortly, as you pass that point, there's no sign at all that there was a, a, a disturbance. And that body and that head has now completely disappeared as you pass and go beyond that, that site. Like into thin air? No, it's like they, <laughs> they removed it very, very quickly. Did the other one seem to care about that at all? Not, not, not as it looks, no. Oh. Can I ask, would I have I heard <clears throat> Thorum's catatonic state? Yeah. Probably not, no. Right. Okay, cool. Nothing else really happens in the last 20 minutes of your trek. The, the ground itself rises slightly and then goes down into a small gully. The number of Warforged becomes more and more, but they're more sparse now. They're not in that, in that line, one, and one on one side, one on the other, side by side, shoulder to shoulder. This time, as you pass a particular point, the tents become much larger, but then the, the Warforged demonic creatures become more visible um, the prisoners become more numerous as they all start to just spread out. And it's at this point where you see... Yes? Would you say the smaller tents are now past tents? They are now past tents, yeah. Okay, cool. That is... That's beautiful. Um, they... <laughs> amazing. Um, and you see beyond now, closer than ever, and now visible in your sight this on the where rock should be it's simply a pool and the pool expands to the right and the left for hundreds and hundreds of feet in either direction and it's almost like a lake and there's just embers that start and as it gets deeper flames spout out and then lava overtakes and there's almost like a wave and then it recedes, a wave of lava and then it recedes. And here in this, in this, in this distance beyond you is where Gunnar, you, you saw the Lord of Blades speaking to Tiamat. The fire pit. And Victor <clears throat> holds his hand up and turns toward you all now that everyone's dispersed a little. He whispers to the group and he says, I don't hear him. His rampage would have been heard by now, but I don't see him. He may have gone back into his, into his headquarters to rest. Perhaps he meditates to Tiamat to speak to him. <clears throat> but he is waiting. He had me come to you to bring you to him directly. Can we see the... Um, <coughs> the illusion of Tiamat in the lake or is it not there at the moment? It doesn't seem to be. No, there's nothing that's coming out of this lake at all. It seems to just be a sea. A sea of small flickering flame. 
So, be cautious in your words. I will be there with you, but I will be silent. Do what you can. Convince him. Deceive him. Intimidate him. I'm, I'm not sure what your plan is when you actually go to him to speak. But do so with confidence. Do so with magic or without magic. Whichever you see, however you see fit. But now it comes to the point. Be ready. And he guides you further in. And very soon, beyond some of these campsites, an enormous triple story circus like um, tent appears it's oval shape and it's dug in with rope and with um, pittance and into the ground many many of these ropes are are, um, are secured and the, this tent flap is open and it's sort of sort of side on to you but also hugging the very perimeter of the start of this of this lava expanse and you hear from within this deep rumble muttering who knows draconic okay you both hear this deep rumbling of a fam- not a familiar voice, voice but a voice you've heard before of a, a slightly deeper again Lord of Blades muttering prayers to Tiamat yes <clears throat> um, how far out from the tent are we? you are now about 60 feet away okay and are there any other warforged around us? Are they like moving about? They're moving about in their own way. You see probably in your sights about 30 of them, mm-hmm. but they all seem to be either tending to fires or, or guiding slaves back and forth, collecting what kind of, things. What kind of slaves? Humanoid, mostly, some orc. Okay. And... Um, Tell her in 79, liquid hot magma. Go on. <laughs> magma. Um, and are any of them paying attention to us? Or are they all just like... Eh, some of them are, some of them are, yeah, some of them are, are observing you. Um, they stop for a moment and then walk past. Uh, and what's the contingent that we're with right now? Like, is it just... About 20 warforged oh. still. <clears throat> okay. Behind you, completely behind you, but in a line of two... So in twos, mm-hmm. directly behind each other, and then Victor at the front. Okay, so it's Victor, us, two lines of ten behind us. Correct. <clears throat> um, I'll just speak to uh, Thorum in his mind. And Travaga, are you with us? Yeah, I've got a sword pointed at Thorum's back. Okay, yeah. So he's not one of the ten, twenty, sorry. Is it separate? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, he's one of the five. <clears throat> <laughs> the jury's still out on that <laughs> um, so I'm just going to say to you um, we, we can't go in there we, we need everyone to see this if we go in there the plan falls apart there's no illusion to dispel I reply in my mind yeah we need, we need him to bring her forth in front of everyone we can't do that in the tent. Then challenge him. Can I still reply? Yeah. Then challenge him. Have him take it before us. He might not give us that choice once we're in the tent. I'm going to say, I'm going to call him out. You can also hear this. Yeah. Good argument. Um, <laughs> I was not expecting uh, 
the illusion to already be gone. I think I don't think it it will appear unless he makes it appear. And perhaps we try to convince him to show your deaths too, dear Matt. Yes. So, Just so you know, I can't hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> so this is not even handy. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Actually, yeah, maybe. Can I? How am I going to know? <laughs> well, while you find out, you also need to dance because that is what has been redeemed. So go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wisdom saved. Dance, Thank dance, you so dance, much. Dance, You're in the, dance, you just dance, see dance, dance, everybody, dance, dance, how amazing dance, Rook do a little dance. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We're in the middle of a, uh, right. a fairly hello. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, welcome. Uh, enjoy. Enjoy. Um, thank you for the dance as well. And thank you so much, Wisdom Safe. What a great time to come in. Yeah, yeah. fantastic timing. Uh, let's see what about team... Uh, oh my God, that is the best dance I've ever seen you do. <laughs> Not bad for, yeah, for that timing. Um, I'm waking up. Are you? No. Oh, right, right, right. I can just end it when I want to. So Correct. I just, Correct. I don't know. I guess I'll do it when I want to do it. Okay, so you're just going to choose and let, let me know? Yeah, I was just thinking of for RP, like so go it says roll you're king. blind and incapacitated. Yeah, so you can't heal. Well, so the key thing, the actual effects are blind and incapacitated. Mm -hmm. But to Michele's previous point, um, for the sweating, it says well, I appear to be catat catatonic. catatonic. Yeah, so I appear that so I'm not actually it. So correct. Can I hear these guys then or? I'd say yes. Okay. I'd say so go yeah. for it. I can. Yeah. I can hear what's going on. <laughs> um, well, we're not speaking um, verbally at the moment. We're yeah, I'm, speaking. I'm, I'm playing dead. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So just looking at the tent, you said that it's held up by um, posts. Not like posts, pegs, but pegs? rope. Huh? But rope with pythons or pitons that have been hammered into the ground. Like, like you would find a normal tent to be. Catapult that shit out. <laughs> uh, probably well. a, a, good, a good 50, after quickly counting, a good 50 large, hefty hemp ropes. 50 hefty. Um, how, how, if I had to estimate the circumference of this tent? Um, probably about, the entire circumference would be about 120 feet. <laughs> Pretty massive. Perfect. I would love to cast Wall of Fire around the entire tent. So everybody, uh, Gunner is now casting a Wall of Fire around so, the tent of the Lord of Blades. Um, I'm going to draw uh, the, the fire from the magma. Magma. <laughs> um, and hurl it around the tent and have the um, fire facing inward. Okay. Cool. Um, so as you all watch, a, a, this, this is, uh, are you doing it and making any movements to this effect or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just, my arms move in the direction that I'm pushing the fire. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> um, before we went to rest last time, I cast a divine intervention. Yes, you did. I hope that an old character and friend of ours would return. Sure. So I'm going to just do that again now. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Happening. Go for it. Is it Penelope? <laughs> <laughs> so what's the... <laughs> you see that, right? Yes. That's a 12, right? Yes. Now, if it's the same level, or, or lower. Uh, <laughs> sorry, no. I also wasn't expecting that to work. <laughs> <laughs> um, the... The damage initially yes. is 29 fire damage. Okay, to, okay, but you're doing it outside the tent, aren't you? Uh, well, I'm surrounding the outside like of the tent. Right, like butting, buttressing up against the sure. tent. So the, the tent is immediately oh, absolutely. taking the, the tent 29 is, fire damage. Uh, uh, as you, <clears throat> as you uh, pray to Edo, you almost feel like the effect takes place immediately of, of whatever you were praying as flames just start to surround this entire um, 
uh, home or at least prayer spot of um, of the Lord of Blades' tent, and you hear this as as the canvas immediately takes hold and starts to just ignite. But so tell me about this roll. So <laughs> what is this roll? What what is this? So my divine intervention allows me to. Should we wait for Rook? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's incapacitated. He's That's right. right. It's true. That's right. He doesn't so, know shit. As an action, ah, sorry, he's back. as an action, I request my deity's aid and roll percentile dice. If the number rolled is equal to or less than your cleric level, your deity intervenes. I'm a level twelve cleric. That's a, level, <laughs> that's a twelve that I've just rolled. Ah! And as this wall of fire races around the tent, and we stand next to a boiling lake of lava. In the middle of an army of the undead, I... Oh, Warforged. Is, Warforged. Warforged. <laughs> Where there's soon to be undead. Um, whoop, whoop. I, I simple prayer. Okay. Please, yeah, please return to us. <laughs> okay. Sure. So... From <laughs> your prayer... <laughs> <laughs> you... Wait a moment, and your mace, Dorubaliux, this coatl within the weapon, a symbol of Edo himself, starts to glow. But differently, different to the fiery red that you recognize to be Edo's power, but a nimbus white. And Dori Baliux in your mind speaks for the first time in such a long time. As he says, Edo is always here. Through this, watch. And you see that just above the flaming pool that is directly in front of you that Tiamat herself had emerged only a day before a small bubble suddenly appears or is it simply light you're not quite sure but then it becomes larger and larger. And you all notice that above this, and this glow seems to be just overcoming the heat that now cools in your environment. Go on. As this happens, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna look up towards it, and if I can, <coughs> use my thaumaturgy cantrip. So I wanna draw as many of the Warforged who are looking, draw their attention out towards it. <clears throat> okay, and what do you, you what are you saying? Are you saying anything with the thermotogy? What's that over the lava? Is that a bubble? What's that? Is okay, that is that Tima? Doesn't look like last time. Through that, <laughs> as you as you booming voice yells out in common, you see that the Warforge now start to stop, and look and know the direction in which you're speaking, and as this beacon becomes l- larger and larger and the wind buffets the environment around you through this enormous light as though through a doorway that seems to be an enormous draconic mouth of red scale and sharpened teeth and its mouth is <clears throat> slightly open and you can see this forked tongue enormous just licking the lips around uh, and the, around it and the teeth are also being covered and this mouth becomes wider and wider as the tongue lolls out more and you feel this <sighs> shot of flame that billows out of this enormous dragon head which now reveals its full face into the material plane 
and you know this to be true that in front of you now is possibly Edo Edo himself as his mouth widens more and through it with a breath of life you see a figure move beyond its clutches and you see floating out of it an archmage of the twelve his eyes white orbed his focus intense looking down at you directly on him is a staff you've not seen before of red that has two large fangs at the tip of it draconic looking um, teeth on either side and between them a lightning lightning crackles and while he's holding it up in one hand his other there seems to be a a conduit in his other hand as the lightning crashes over to his other but he's controlling it with his other hand and with short black hair neatened a dark blue robe familiar to you that he always wears Fariso descends and in your mind you hear Dori Baliuk say may this be your aid be your help and be a blessing upon you a reward for your for your patience with him and you see this <clears throat> large face of a dragon go back into this glowing golden nimbus and this spark this circular spark of gold starts to and quickly vanishes with a small and the heat then lifts again and over overcomes you all and floating down as the licks of flame engulf this tent of the Lord of Blades, Fariso Doldoletta <clears throat> lands. This crackle of lightning still live. Looking towards you all. Looking down towards Rook. Well. What have we here? I'm sorry to pull you out of... I assume you went to hell. Sorry to pull you out of hell. <laughs> <laughs> but we have need of you. How are the other Warforged reacting to this? As <laughs> this whole conceptual thing <clears throat> happens, they have drawn their swords <clears throat> and are very cautiously slowly moving towards you all and this pool of lava as from what it looks like <clears throat> more and more have gathered <clears throat> hundreds all swords drawn all at the ready at this spectacle okay. all surrounding you The flames are completely enveloping the tent, but you hear the same mumbling coming from inside. No abating, no pausing, continuing on in Draconic, praying to Tiamat, taking no notice of the events of outside. He, he's, he's praying in Draconic. I would know 
just being someone who prays in Draconic. I know how to blaspheme in Draconic, right? Yep. <laughs> you you can a, speak Draconic. I'm going to give a remarkable torrent of blasphemy against Tiamat. Whatever he's saying, the literal opposite with a whole bunch of thing words I can't say on the stream. Unfortunately. <laughs> sure. <laughs> thing words. Thing words. <clears throat> and and are you are you saying that out loud? How are oh, you? Very loudly, projecting it right in towards the tent. Okay. Some of them are direct responses to the things he's saying. Sure. Okay. As you say these words, I will roll something for him. Okay. The mumbling stops. (laughs) As the speaking to Tiamat subsides, there's no movement. And you watch very quickly as the tent suddenly collapses on itself (laughs) as wood and support beams and rope are burnt to a cinder as this canvas just just collapses on top of a figure this outline and other bits and bobs you see that there are there's there was remnants of furniture maybe some books with pages now floating away in the air yes um so i know that the initial fire wall of fire is is magical flame um um but anything that it catches on fire and continues to burn after that was is that considered also magical or is that it is okay yep as long as there's a, a, a connection, a physical connection, yes. Okay. Yeah. This figure underneath the canvas does not move, but seems to be kneeling, away, facing away from you with these charred bits of canvas still on it. Fariso, with this crackling lightning between hand and staff, speaks up again and seems to ignore what's happening around you. Is he dead? No. And Amara? She is well. And close at hand. Very well. Where am I? How did I get here? <laughs> Looking at you, buddy. <laughs> You're the demon wastes. You are at the final battle, I would hope. And you are here because it was not right the way you left the world. I remember. So you trust me now? Yes. Your reputation is intact. The twelve are dismantled, though. And I take a few steps forward. (laughs) (laughs) Your authority is not. (laughs) Your reputation is intact, but your authority is not. You're you're making me look like the worst guard in the world here. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) And then Fariso turns towards the crashed tent the pit in front of him. I see we are trying to outthink and outpace our enemy. Where is Molestra? She's in Sean, I guess. Not a fitting place for her to be. She can cause much havoc. And and he turns towards the Lord of Blades now, who now starts to rise. And you can see from this point of view that initially there was it's he's considered a large creature by nature. But as he rises, you can see that metal starts to overlap amongst itself. You can hear this 
has there's an extension to his form that becomes larger and larger you can see he reaches out with a large hand and takes what looks to be a badly burnt uh, slave of some kind who whimpers and immediately he with one hand slams it and crushes the humanoid figure into himself and you can see then that there's an amalgamation that that begins and quickly overtakes a side that seems to have been has been wounded or broken on metal and the being whimpers no more as this warforged rises more and further into the air and you can see that his arms massive become even larger as metal just seems to appear and form on top of what looks to be flesh and blood and vain however the one piece that doesn't seem to change is his head which seems to stay initially oversized for his features but then becomes more attuned to the same shape and it's a almost like um, a Roman style of helmet upon a mask of metal one piece his back expands into blades that are winged in shape as though he could rise and fly with the help of these numerous long swords great swords all connected to his to his um his back and his shoulders his neck thick his legs cemented to the ground and he becomes huge in stature and stature and hunched over still however with bits of blood dripping from all parts of his body slowly he turns and simply is holding what looks to be a book which is now badly burnt and in the other hand simply a great sword a simple looking weapon but held in one hand almost small for his size <clears throat> looking down at Victor what is this And Victor looks up. The captured, my lord. The remnants of the five. Finally. At your request, captured and brought here. Have mercy. Come forward, so I may see you closer. Bring me the dead one. You can see that as his jaw, metallic jaw moves, you can see very small hundreds of fangs, metallic in nature, but with a humanoid tongue that seems to be speaking for it. happened then similar to with the previous demon okay M move you dog <laughs> <laughs> as I'm as I'm done with the move I'm gonna pick up pick, pick up Rook and as I do I'm gonna go oh Rook and lift you up 
Is that the secret word? That is the same word. He weighs more than a sea cucumber. <laughs> In which case, <clears throat> was sea cucumber the safe word? <laughs> <Who might work? laughs> That's just our safe word. Um, I guess so. Sea cucumber. I don't know. Are you grabbing me or? I'm lifting you in my okay. Eyes. So as this takes place, um, I, I guess, straighten out. Feet touch the ground. Throw my bat head back. Um. Uh, this I guess this is in seconds. So as soon as I come to, I say, Agnarak of the Chimera, the head of the Ram, come forward. I need you to make me, um. Just a wisdom check, please. Okay. <clears throat> uh, wisdom? Mm, not save, just check. Just a check? Yeah. That's a 20. Dirty. Dirty 20, okay. Yeah. Let me just do something here quickly. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> For a moment, you see a shuffle of a, of a large metal foot and, the, and one step on the ground. But then it shifts back and the voice coming from the Lord of Blades says, You were dead. And you have been deceived yes. far greater than my menial spell. The God you pray to is a lie. Dear Matt. Frazzle Bloom, Levitus. Dear Matt is my queen. I know not these things then call her and we will show you or does she still not answer your prayers for there is no prayer to answer for she's not real looking between you all the Lord of Blades reaches out and quicker than a fleeing mouse grabs what takes one step and grabs a war forged and as simple as one would throw a doll with a with a resounding roar he throws this creep this war forged one-handed and silently you see this metallic humanoid fly through the air, flailing, but soundlessly, and disappear into the lava pit with a... Was this Warforged inside the tent? No. So he had to walk near the fire? Yep. Then he would take damage. Okay. Roll, roll for me. As these licks of flame... <clears throat> start to envelop the leg of this huge creature the Lord of Blades he says doesn't seem to take heed of the damage but says to you all 28 28 points yep okay oops alright thank you noted and you can see that some of the flesh on this leg starts to burn and dry out, but it doesn't seem to be phased too much. <clears throat> Does he step back? He doesn't. Okay. Not yet. He'll continue each time. Cool. Each round. Do not speak unless it's spoken to. You are in the presence of the future of 
the Lord of Corvair. The king, only second to Tiamat. You will not disobey my commands. Now, kneel. If your power comes through Tiamat, <clears throat> then show us, and I will kneel. This creaking of a neck comes <clears throat> uh, faces you. My power comes from my hands. Hello. My own Tiamat simply gifts the land in which you see before you. That is what she promises, that Earth will burn at her flame and be ruled by my fist. Is the whole Warforge camp listening to this? His words are soft, but those that are in the, in the immediate vicinity have knelt. Um, I turn... And are as, taking heed. As Thorum's having that conversation um, to the crowd and say... Noticing that some of them have no understanding they have heard. Um, the future is close for those that want one. Onatar's blessing. If you turn from this war forge, you should see yourself to a kind of life, one not filled with war. You've all been lied to. Make a persuasion check for me, please. Um, Go on, Gunnar. How long has it been since he's been standing there? It's been six seconds. One round. This whole conversation's been six seconds? So far. Okay. That's another 19 for 20. 20 in total? Yeah. All right. Um... I do want to turn back. Agnarak. Your friends are close by. The head of the dragon, Purback, brings an army here. And Victor, the lion. And I, I look to, directly towards Victor and kind of gesture for him to step back. There is no way this demon that keeps you captive can succeed. If you can push through, friend, now is the time. The Lord of Blades looks now emotionless at <clears throat> Victor. What says he? What does he mean? The lion, the chimera. <clears throat> and Victor simply kneels and looks up and says, I know not my Lord, he is just come out of consciousness. He must be delirious. And with that, I need to roll a deception check for Victor. Okay. The Lord of Blades steps out of the flame now and is no longer and just stands still hunched but one hand empty now with that sword fall and the other still holding on to that book very very firmly almost crushing it or what remains of it do you speak for the fire
looking at you, Rook. You wouldn't understand this. But we are all autonomous here. Unlike you, stealing these souls. They understand order. They understand what it means to be free of their creators who continue in secret to find ways to put them back as slaves. They seek to undermine the war-forged way of life. Too long have they been coerced, trapped in their own minds. I seek to put an end to their suffering. And I turn back to the crowd. You've seen his brand of freedom, the ones that wish to leave he killed. Is this a king you wish to follow? The kneeling doesn't seem to abate. In fact, as he as he continues to talk, more of the Warforged seem to kneel who are a little bit further away that see their, their companions um, take, take the knee. You're living under fear from just another. He now turns to you, Thorum. Go on. As he speaks to the crowd, <clears throat> Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. No worries. Noted. With one hand, as he looks towards you, Thorum, with the hand that's free, he sort of mutters something under his breath and flicks this large metallic fist in a particular direction. You see immediately, Gunner, that there is magic in his words. Um, what is the spell level of your spell? Four. Four? Let's just check something quickly. Um, okay, I need to make an ability check for him. How long has this been so far? It's been about, oh, now about three rounds worth. Okay. And what's your spell DC? Uh, it's, <clears throat> if you're, if you're casting Dispel, yep. it's, um, 10 plus the spells level so it's 14 14 he, it, it, he does succeed so the licks of flame die out the wall of fire that surrounds this tent has now completely vanished and all that's left is a cracked earth that's smoking slightly in the air as he continues he says you how do you think that you will leave here an army of unconvinced followers of Tiamat. You calling yourself the Five, only two in my vision. Look, given how this is going, <laughs> none of the plan has been able to happen. <laughs> I'll drop the uh, alter cell spell and go. Ha ha! It was all a ruse. <laughs> Perhaps you should have amalgamated yourself some brains with these body parts. Then you wouldn't have been deceived by a false dragon queen and the mighty Dravago. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> As that happens, Amara looks around and under her breath you all hear her say fuck it 
and she also <laughs> drops her disguise and stands up and says, Ha! Yeah! Exactly what he said. But I'm a Mara! Ilyana as well. <laughs> what, what makes you think you're, you're going to be living here? An army led, led by, by the three of the demon wastes is about to pour down here and end whatever happens. Looking back at you, and a moment passes and he, for the first time, gives you some sort of idea of his emotion. And there's a small crack of a smile. Crack. Exactly. I have sent some to deal with them until Tiamat can lend me her full power. And when that final moment passes, they will be engulfed in death. I do not believe you. Where is she? Show us Tiamat. She does not simply appear when requested. You know so little. <clears throat> you cleric. You religious being of pitiful existence know nothing of the gods. I turn to look at Fritzio for a second. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> From there. Then you call her. Or does she not answer when you call her name? She will answer when she deems the moment is right. When the time will come where we need her most. Sounds to me like the king doesn't have the favor of his queen. She only talks to you when she's willing to. This doesn't sound like a good relationship. Make me a either intimidation or persuasion, whichever one you'd prefer. Um, that will be intimidation, which is a 10. A 10? Okay. MVCDM, that's exactly right. <laughs> uh, a bit of a lozenge would help that, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> a 10? Once again. A seemingly thin illusion and pitiful knowledge of the gods. And he looks you up and down for a moment longer and says, You are one of us. Where does your fealty lie? with my own decisions. You sit here saying that you want to break the yoke of the old masters from the Warforged. I say, do your own work. You're following this queen. She'll be, it's not even real, but it, what you follow will lead to your own destruction and the destruction of all the Warforged. You're a pitiful, pitiful being, amalgamating others Stand for yourself. If you're that tough, you will fight us and not have an army do your bidding. The Lord of Blades now gives in your mind almost a sense of mirth, but wicked. And he starts to move 
and he starts to walk towards you softly. Small crumple, the small rocks crumple under his feet. And he gets right up to you, surrounding, uh, surrounded by the rest of your group. And he gets down low and whispering in your ear as close as this being has come yet. He says, Fear not, once Tiamat emerges, I will stand alone. You think that I have surrounded myself with guards? They will fall at her destruction. I need them not. They were simply here. At this point, yep. can I cast Thaumaturgy yep. on him yep. so that his voice moves? <laughs> okay. And as... Fuck okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, he may need to make a saving throw. If it's, a, if it's an unwilling effect... I, I I feel like because uh, unless the wording of the spell is different, I might need to have him make a saving throw. Yeah, that's it. It doesn't say mm. anything about doing it on others. But, Correct, uh, which yeah. is why I think it, it might need a saving throw. Apologies. Okay. What's no, the spell good. DC? Uh, is seventeen. Okay. That's a that's a natural sixteen plus his bonuses. As he attempts, as you attempt to cast a spell, he immediately almost has you hold your breath as the spell disappears in its magical effects as soon as you started casting it. And he continues unabated and he says, They are fodder for my rule. But... It is acceptable. A show <clears throat> of power is always a sign of strength. It is a shame that you will not get to meet Tiamat when she emerges. For before this, your challenge has been accepted. And he uh, leans back. Um, I'll, the fire opals in the Helm of Brilliance will flicker. Mm -hmm. And I'll um, pull out my rapier and scrape it across the metal on my arm. Mm -hmm. And the blade will catch flame. And with that sign, the blade in lights up it, right in front and very close to the face of the Lord of Blades who darts back quickly much more quickly than you would have thought avoiding the the flame and stepping back once twice and then leaning forward again and you can see that within some sort of purchase of his body with his free hand he pulls out this large metallic first a handle that extends a couple of meters and then on the end of that a chain and at the end of that chain <clears throat> is a large spiked ball and he lays it into the ground puts his book onto the ground looks around to you all and says very well If possible, I'll jump out, raise my arm up, hand will glow, pull the blow, uh, bow out. Mm -hmm. um, by Onatar's blessing, we'll see you slain, Lord of Blades. Now is the time 
to present yourself god of the forged okay make me another wisdom check please <coughs> wisdom um 17 plus 1 18 18 <laughs> um I'll also hit him with a bit of flash of genius, uh, given the situation. I'm assuming we're all gearing up. Okay. That'll be five. Another five, yeah. So, 23? 23. Okay. <clears throat> as you... As the conduit and the gift of Onatar extends in your hand, you hear a voice beside you that says... <laughs> Well, isn't this a surprise? And you turn and you see the extension, the extension of a dragon, of a copper head and a copper small body that you've seen before as you almost died tending over a small forge as Onatar is next to you in surreal or flesh you're not sure and as he enters your mind he says listen for the coming words will win you this battle. And as Fariso extends his lightning staff again and licks of energy are called forth. Looking around, he gives you all a bit of a nod. Amara, staff at the ready. And you all facing the Lord of Blades as his back is to this pit of fire. Wall forged around him, still knelt, unmoving. <clears throat> we will end it there. <laughs> well done, everybody. This is for you. Excellent work. Nice. Um, look loving the puns from the chat and the, and the <laughs> loving the jokes i love that that's so cool you have me very distracted you chat you but happy very happy with your amazing amazingness thank you so much for for being here and uh and looking on as, as these uh this, as this group uh just finds out i guess what happens next week and what words of wisdom onatar will give you <laughs> we shall we shall see and it is in your mind so during the week i will actually send that to you oh yeah yeah okay cool a lot of uh, god action what's that a lot of god action tonight. a lot of god action this evening yeah yeah <coughs> that's the spirit um, yeah, what's, that, what's that just like uh, just bring people back to life <laughs> um back once again take a lot longer than it did <laughs> yeah dude that divine intervention my gosh unbelievable um fariso coming back to you interesting very interesting uh once again thank you very very much everybody for joining us thank you and congratulations to at au gateway uh winning the prize for the uh the paladin etch glass thanks to meeples and dragons thank you meeples and dragons uh and that amazing antimatter die uh that d20 behemoth which you will get um <laughs> back at the fire but yes correct uh <laughs> and yeah i think um i think i'll leave it there until next week uh anyone else have any parting words uh maybe just one uh, yeah. quick little shout out to uh amara who's still in the chat he, yeah she's extremely sick um it's a shame you couldn't be sitting here in, yeah. instead you're in the other room but of uh course. yes thank yeah. you thank poor you thing Gary. yeah thank you for uh for giving us uh, all the uh, all the advice as well i got some things about what she would do and stuff and and uh <laughs> if, my, if my character of her was on point <laughs> it was okay it was okay i got some practice to, to go but um i found it very interesting actually to to have 
everybody here apart from Amara. It, it, like I was very interested to know how would that happen, and it killed it, completely killed it. So, well done, e excellent work. Um, we will see everybody next week. Thank you everybody very much, and we will see you all next Tuesday. Thanks for joining, guys. I do. See you later. No, how do you do? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <you>. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>